Hello and welcome to Source of the Force, representing Buddha Palm TV. I am your host, Technical, and welcome. Hope you are well. I trust all's good at your end. Um, today, we actually have a rerun of an episode um, that we did a while back. Um, somehow I managed to get the episode corrupted on YouTube. I don't know what I did. So I managed to get um, the amazing Dean James back and talk to him again about... Um, his sort of journey through Muay Thai. So if you cast your minds back, just for those uninitiated people who may not have caught that episode, Dean James, Dean James is an amazing dude. Um, he, I know he doesn't like me talking about it, but he's, uh, he, when I first met him, he was just getting over surgery where he had um, cancer of the bowel. Um, and then he started doing Muay Thai over here in Wolverhampton at Trojan Gym. And under the tutelage of uh, Professor Tony Myers um, back then, and I was I was lucky enough to train alongside him at the gym at the time. Um, he's now multiple world title holder in Muay Thai, and I think it's just like an amazing story of coming from uh, what can be achieved when someone has that determination and drive and has the right people around them, you know. So I just wanted to talk to the guy again and make sure this was documented because. To me, man, you know what I mean? His movements, like the sort of thing you can see in a film, you know what I mean? It's it's a, it's a an impressive thing. And I know he doesn't like having the the illness part side of his story documented too tough. I think it's a big thing and it's inspirational to me. So with no further ado, may I welcome to Source of the Force, my man, Dean James. Enjoy. Source of the Force, episode four part two or three or something like that. Do you know what I mean? We have... Dean asked how many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we are blessed again to have my good friend, long-time brethren, multiple world title holder, my man, Dean James. What are you saying, sir? Just say thanks for having me, first of all. Thank you. Uh, but it, it was yeah. it was close, man. But I thought, yeah, why not? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, sure, do a thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, ple ple pleasure is all mine, man. Pleasure is all mine. Trust me. You know what I mean? And, and may I say that's a very sharp cut you have there, sir. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yes. you know, when, when you have to get a trim, and then I called you and I said I have to get the best trim for the. <laughs> <laughs> you get me, you get me. You know, you know when them ball patches start appearing <laughs> left, right, and centre? That's what it's happening now. <laughs> Serious, man. You, you see me when I cut off my dreads now? Do you know what I mean? It was kind of like one of those ones where I was like, you know what? I'm at an age now, you know, where having hair is a blessing, you know, grow that thing back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I just remember my uncle's hair. He started here. And then when he had his dreads. Yeah, what, went back off? there. <laughs> like that's what I thought is that dreads held his hairline back. Not aware of that. I'm happy to get myself some dreads and work it out. After you look at white class. Yeah, man, just weave it across or something. Like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. One of them ones, one of them ones. Well, so obviously, do you know, we've had you on the show before. Yeah. And we were talking a bit about um, the sort of the rigors of training for fights the pressure of the fights and all that kind of the kind of mentality type of stuff i'd like to go a little bit more into that kind of stuff man because that's to me that's gold dust you know because it's stuff that most people nine nine point nine percent of nine point ninety nine point nine percent people will never experience do you know what i mean so yeah, it's wicked to be able to talk to you and ex and have you kind of explain the kind of things i've got to go through i, I never never ever I'd fight. I wasn't just, I wasn't a natural born fighter. It's not natural born. I just, do you know what I, mean? I did? I could work things out in my own little head, but not, I didn't want to. Um, I remember, right, when I was young, and my mum brought this up earlier because I told her I was talking to you. Mm -hmm. I used to cry at the Ethiopia. You Ethiopian kids and they've got nothing. Yeah. Imagine that then and you now, and it's just two different extremes. Do you know what I mean? But uh, the fighting didn't come like till 
And in fact, actually, the fighting did come, but when I'm surrounded by people that you can almost, um, like, kind of almost create, uh, like, an environment where you're comfortable, then the fighting started coming. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. no way. When you train with people that's better than your opponent, in my head, you spar in some of the best fighters that have done it. Like, and the, the light you up, but it was just different when you get in the ring with them. The different when you get in the ring with the, sorry, the opponent, not them. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So one thing I'd like to start, start off with, right, is sort of, let's go back to, because we'll come to that, like you, you're sort of starting off and getting into fighting and how that kind of progressed. But um, go back to you as a youth and the kind of environment, because I remember you saying something to, I can't remember if you was on the interview or just me and you just chatting, but you was kind of saying about like where you grew up, it was kind of like you didn't really know many white guys or you and Wayne, was yeah. tight like that. But yeah. that wasn't like a standard thing in the area. It wasn't like a mixed area. How, how, what, talk to me about that, man. Yeah, it, it wasn't It wasn't split. It wasn't like <clears throat> a split where you don't, but it, you just, from the estate that I was from, predominantly mm. black and mixed. And you just identify a lot easier. And then on the back estate, it was racist. So then the whole idea is when they all come in, well, we all need to go. That's the whole idea. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It was just, uh, and then I'd said. So was there, was there like a lot of friction between like the sort of local areas? What, what area was this? Was this Willow North still? No, I was in Bentley then. Oh, Bentley, Bentley by um, by Junction Ten, in it. Yeah. Yeah, just off just off Junction Ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the area where it was, the school separated two estates, and we grew up. Luckily enough, like we grew up in in such an environment where you see two different sides of someone being right or someone being wrong. Do you know what I mean? You do. You do see. Don't agree with everything, but you can see everything. Mm. So that was that was it was good. And just, so how did you, so how did you and Wayne get to kind of become? Bro, I want to punch him in the face. That's all I want to do with Wayne. <laughs> but I want to, I Mate, if, if, if I remember I, correctly, I, I think you play. have a couple of times, bro. Do you know what I mean? Ask him about it. <laughs> then ask him when he woke up. Joe Wayne, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Wayne. I shouldn't have said that. But that's bad, man. That's bad. No. Wayne, I didn't. I didn't get him to do that. You know, star. Do you know what I mean? No, but it was okay. So how do you two? Because I know, I know you two are tight, yeah. man. Wayne is Wayne is golden, man. But we were both Wayne. small for our age, but he was he was left footed, mm. and I couldn't. Bro, if I kicked a ball, the only way I could see if I was a striker, I'd bang loads of goals. Because I don't even know where the ball's going. So can the keeper know where it's going? Do you know what I mean? Some, some it's like time. logic. But we, <laughs> yeah, with Wayne, I, I raced Wayne. He came up at his, his wedding. I did a, because I was his best man at his wedding. And he came up at his wedding. And when the lady asked me how I knew him, and you know, you look at someone, you think, I don't even like him, you know. <laughs> I look back at year seven. <laughs> I remember I'm my free balls on. And I chase after that boy so hard. Well, Wayne was a Wayne is a really good athlete. He could do everything. So we met through uh, clashes. So he was on like we met on the. I think we met first on the track. Mm. I was running then. I was running. I was doing really well. My cross country running. I was doing really well. Then I heard about this kid. I seen this kid and my man showed up in every designer club, Rockport, North Place. I've got pencils on. So already meeting gonna get on. So um he, he, flossing. He, he, flossing. He, 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 but we were talking on the run and he told me there's two people that go through. There wasn't, bro. What he did was he did a last second burst. So when he ran, he ran off and thought, oh, it's cool, isn't it? So I went to yeah. go and the teacher and I was like, oh, I came second. He was like, oh, okay, well, try again next term. Like, what? I said, I bet, try again next term. Do you just on one, on that, that sit? I was like, try next term. 
So no, there's two people. So no, there's one. Oh, so he didn't want so, you chasing him. He just when he took the eight hundred meters, I had to do one thousand five hundred meters, bro. And I got battered in that run. That run was the most embarrassing thing I could have ever done in my whole entire life. So you know, when a man runs past you and you just want to drink a water, that's how he felt. <laughs> so when the guys were running past me, I was there like, I'm at the gas now. And they say, two more laps. You mean the shit, shit that out? Was it, was it uh, the Alex, is it Alexander or Alexander? Alexander State. Stadium. In Birmingham. Yeah, in that yeah, yeah. Birmingham, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So we were there. And then they put me in this race. And I've never been tore up so much in my life. Do you know when you see them people start picking them gears up and you've already spent all your energy and all you don't want to do is come last? <laughs> you need his all desire to Just win. Make a ham hamstring, man. For hamstring? Otherwise, I'll burn you off, man, my hamstring. I thought about calling my dad to pick me up. That's what I put in his car and drop me off. That's what I thought. But, but yeah. So that's so, so what, what sort of so what age was that? What age did you we, you and we, were, first we met up? we met in we first met in year seven. We didn't get on. We didn't get on in year seven. We met around about year eight, so we'd have been mm. uh thirteen ish. Thirteen. Yeah. Um thirteen when we really started getting on. And then when when I got ill, like he's one of the people that's always been there. Like he was like he, he was always there. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I just think any man that can crash his car and he crashed it, I knew his body, he must have been hurting. So he just wrote his car off and then carried on to the hospital and came and see me. And I only had you get visitors because I was in there for I think I was in for four four weeks. That I, I was moved from the manor hospital to the QE. Got moved from there. And they put me in total, in total, I think I was in for six. Six in total, I think. I think it was around about six. And he didn't miss a day where do you know, always, do you, do you know what I mean? And sometimes things came for more. And I was just yeah. like, and then we got we got really close after that. But um, yeah, he, he, he's just he's just a good, genuinely a good guy. And he's got mm. no bad. I like his energy. He's got no bad uh, energy in him. Do you know what I mean? He's got mm. like, he wants you to do well. Doesn't mean he has to be doing well. So he'll always do his best. Yeah. And when I was cussing him out, when all I wanted, but when I was in the hospital them days, I was nil by mouth and the, he would arrive with no food. Do you know that conversation? Mm. <laughs> That's why you're on about. You, you got no chill, man. You got no chill, bro. We do, man. The, man, <laughs> the man's crashed his car to come and see you. And you're him because he hasn't brought you a crunchy or something. What, what you're... We're in my car. That's all I've got to say. It's that I'm all right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, cool. so... Yeah, man. So, you know what I mean? Wayney, shout out to Richard Wayne, by the way, man, because people won't know who this is. Wayney is Dean's best, best friend. And what I'm saying is, is that these two, in the area that you grew up with, having a, 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 a best friend that is from a different culture, was that like a standard thing? Was that common or what? It, it wasn't so common, but he used to just fit. Do you know what I mean? He was just... Mm. It's fixed. My mum's my mom's mixed. Mm -hmm. All my family's mixed. So it's not uncommon, but it was just... Yeah. It, it would be one of my tightest... Tightest people can go back to before... Before, like, Tony, he'd be one of the tightest people that I'm on to. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Because I didn't ever feel any anything. I never I never really thought about it until I got a bit older and you start thinking, God... That's quite a big, a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Like, just but when he comes in and says, "Oh, wild one," and I'll be like, "Pardon? How are you? But, are you okay?" That's how I feel like. I feel like responding to me. But uh, no, he's cool. He's cool. He's yeah. a good guy. But it, it, it's a serious thing, man. I mean, like, it's obviously during the time of like your illness. You going yeah. through that, and you're saying my man came and he came to see you on a daily basis at, at hospital, yeah. cr wrote his car off, coming up to see you, and still got there somehow. You know what I mean? Probably yeah. robbed another car. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, 
Do you know what I mean? Is, is... My mum's going to jail after this, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, man. No, he didn't. He didn't. But, um, you know, that's, you know what I mean? That's that's a lot of character, man. That's a, that's a character. That's a ride or die type of, type of dude. You know what but I mean? That, that was the whole background of PCS. We all looked after each other, all of us. Yeah. We'd have each other's back. So it was like, it came easier as we got older because you just know you've got each other's back. Like, mm. That you've just, do you know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to, you've got each other's back. Not necessarily in a fighting sense. I don't mean that. What I mean is like, if you've got a fight, I've got to go running to make sure that you're ready for your fight. Do you know I mean as we spoke about when you used to light us up? And you you're making me sound bad, man. I don't like how you, I don't like how you drop that in. There. Well, I don't light saying. anybody up. I'm just saying, it weren't very nice in the for a fight, was it? So, and then we used to take in turns. But like little things like that, well, that's a squad, that's what a team does, that's what a family did. Like, it seemed particularly nice, but we didn't do it for the, 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 the glory necessarily. You used to get more strategic people. <clears throat> Not saying anyone, anybody's name, but I'm just saying Liam. Um, but with, with like, he, he'd always... You push me in first. But when my man, you were training, he dropped me with a jump scissor knee. <laughs> and probably just stand up and not tell Tony anything. But I didn't even know what happened. I just went down like a stack of spuds. But I sparred you. He just sat there with his, trying to do his wraps. I think he's staying with the raps <laughs> so but the good thing was and i think that's what lacks the sport this the, like in the current days are just taking your brothers back to take your brothers back and that's it and the whole idea is i don't have to be like you can't injure me like if i've got to fight but i can't injure you but i've got to represent and help push you through the gears, and it, it wasn't easy, bro. When we used to spar, it wasn't wasn't easy. It wasn't pleasant. Mm. But uh, it, when I sparred, uh, when Tony put me with um, Pele Pele Reed, mm. it is Pele Reed, isn't it? It is Pele um, Reed, man. Big Pele. Big Pele. All he heard was sorry. <laughs> you bang, sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm going again. <laughs> Bang! Sorry! <laughs> Every time you play story in one round. Right. But uh, legend, absolute legend. Nice guy, but it was Ray good. Pelly, it used to, you'll know this yourself, but it, it just, when someone has, someone had a fight, we all had a fight, so we had to raise our game a little bit mm. more. Tony's pad would get that little bit harder. Mm. And everyone has to be that little bit sharper because... Do you know what we can't you can't you don't have to walk back to the ring we've got our job to do and that's the bit that people want to see yeah yeah so yeah i i think so what you're saying is is kind of like like pcs like proud chow Sue is kind of like back in the day and i and i, and I fully agree with you. it was kind of like uh a family thing do you know what I mean yeah. where if one man was fighting it was kind of like everyone was training to fight everybody stepped up everybody worked harder yeah. got pushed harder and everyone he kind of felt it do you know what I mean it was um it was a good environment man it was a good environment so so check, checking that environment now what was that initial effect on you like when, when we started down at Trojan when you first come on the scene yeah. what was so that then, environment saying with you well it set everything didn't it it set my whole career it set Everything else, like I was, I've always looked, I've always been, I've always looked up to Reese because what Reese, uh, uh, when I was coming through, like um, when I was looking to Reese, as I said to you before, I bought the same shorts, so the pair might oh, be yeah. shorts. You know what I mean? Like, and he, he was just, he was doing things that people weren't doing. And then you watch Pete and Tony on the pads, and I was, watching Pete hit but then not only Pete hit but Tony catching it and Tony's small he's only he's not he's not big um Winston Walker like the, all of them played a massive massive part mm. but when they used to 
sometimes you could just sit there because I sat there for a long time before being able to fight. Um, I sat there for a long time just through illness and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But you can watch people and just appreciate it. Like now, I look at German people tell me, like, I'll get some of the fights, like, oh, it's brilliant. And I'll, I'll look at them and I'll, I think the good brilliance to me was it, it's just something different. Like when you watched um, Tolan, Pins and Chai, uh, when Duero came over, that that is what I think is is great. I, I think it's brilliant. And I'm not saying I could beat anyone. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is like it's brilliant in like education. They make it seem so smart. They choose where they step. I've so seen... ex- explain to sorry, so stop you there, bro. Um, but explain to the people who Thailand Pinsin Chai is and who do well. Well, oh. Thailand Chai lost his belt when he was. I think he lost it in nineteen and went back at like something like thirty one. But clinically, to Spiderman, the the Tony had brought over a team, and like you, he sparred another guy called I think his name was Gar. Mm. Gar, the bigger one. Mm. And when he started doing what he was doing to me, like, jeez. Mm. And it's not... It's you know not what? Like, you still didn't explain it. who Thailand was, you know? You see? You? you still didn't explain who Thailand was, you know? Oh, it's Thailand. He was a pin in box, but he's from Pinkin Chai Gym. Yeah. But they're known to be clever. Um, Really, really smart. Mm. Um, I watched a video of his earlier, actually. Um, really smart. He had, did he have a stadium championship or something? Did he? Yeah, did he, he, have he lost it, didn't he? he? Lost it. I think that's what. I, I think he lost it. I don't know if it's nineteen or twenty-one. He lost it, mm. and then can't get your title back when you're thirty. I think he was thirty when he got it. I think mm. back. Yeah. In so Thailand. In, yeah. So in Thailand, there's kind of like you know, like how we have lots of. I'm just talk, chatting to the viewers here. In yeah. Thailand, because you know, like how you have different belts and stuff like that. Really, in Thailand, the only two things they really, really look at is like the stadium titles, like Rajdhanan and Lumpin, in it. Yeah. Are those still are those still a thing now? You know what I mean? I'm yeah, actually... but definitely a thing. If you're yeah. a stadium champion, I know one championship have got loads of the, the brought loads of stadium champions in, mm. and the, when they start fighting, bro, it's just and you know that the ties are there. Like because you have to do the hydration test, the ties are probably better off because the the foreigners can't lose as much weight to fight them. Mm. But then they also lose a lot of experience. They start fighting at like six years old. Yeah, some you know I mean? full rules and yeah, it's crazy, that, crazy. My, my son, like my son turned nine the other day. I just thought, imagine already in Thailand, yeah. he'd have had forty fights by now. No shin pad. Like, do you know what I mean? It would just it'd be a party. I should yeah, so, 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 Th- so Thailand now. When, t- um, Tony invited Pimu, Thailand, Pinsin yeah. Chai, and Gar over the uh, Gar, and he had the other one, but I don't know his name. The one who had the... Tony brought over one had a, a ridiculous teeth, a front kick. Was and that he... Tap Attack? Was that Tap Attack? No, not one Tap Attack. One of four crookie. The guy who fought Crookie. No, when no, when he fought Tap Attack, when Crookie fought Tap Attack, that was that was a good fight. There was another man, one. Yeah, man, that was and, a, that was my man was a killer, and Crookie was uh, a killer. That was a Crookie. Is, his like, that like, was man. That he's was... only given that now. He's got the uh, Simbi Muay Thai. Right, yeah. He's, yeah. he's doing really well. Like he's done really well, but he was sick. He was sick. And then there was another one, and I can't think of his name for the life of me. I can't think of his name. Tony brought him over. He's only he's small, really, really small, but small. Mm. So I thought maybe he might be fifty-three kilos. Then I get the call from Tony if I can take them up to the way. And I took uh, Pimu. Um, he used to own WPT. I took Pimu up to the way with the other five. But he couldn't speak English. So Joe, weird it is, me. You got someone in your house that can't even communicate with you. Mm. Like that that was the weirdest thing, but people wasn't there then. So we had to go from, we were waiting for 
I think Liam was still making weight or something like that. I think Liam mm-hmm. thought it was sure. And then we went there and then I was talking to Pimu and he just wasn't affected at all. And I was like, uh, he thought uh, Ashley Gishard. Um, yes, but, I remember that name, yeah. Remember him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something wrong with his arm. Yeah, he, I think he had a bike accident or something. He hurt his arm. But he was good. He, he was really good. And then when I watched him just keep flicking Mintos up in the air and catching his mouth before the fight, and you're there like, he does understand he's fighting, doesn't he? Mm. He understands he's fighting. Not worry, not worry, black boy, not worry. Okay, <laughs> well, okay. So I'm there like, and I was worried because I didn't, uh, Ashton Gishard warm up and I seen the waiting, and he didn't even, he came to mind and then he said, oh, because uh, he couldn't speak much English. And I was like, uh, food. And I was trying to like, Jerry trying to turn English dumb. You know, mm. Oh, food. And try and talk <laughs> like this. Mm. That's what happened. And then he was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. Then I took him to the nearest chip shop near to me. <laughs> chip yeah, shop, you know. Chip. You know what I mean? Professional <laughs> athletes, nutrition. Got him chip. <laughs> Well, it was just hilarious, but then I was I felt I was in trouble. So I had to call Tony to speak to Pimu and I said, Oh, he's had fish and chips because normally we can't we can't have that kind of food on the mm. day of the fight, on the day of the weighing, sorry. Mm. And then it was eat yet yeah, everything. And I was like, Oh and I had my food. I said, like, Oh, you want you want? Yes. <laughs> Got my food as well. So he's like eating the food. I said, like, oh, God. Mine's been tortured and training in, in Thailand, man. He caught up with his fish and chips all round, man. All round. No, he was, he was, he was, he was that, that would be a massive part of, of the journey of how um, I think I see the school. Mm. It, it it was interesting though when 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 like those guys came over, like Pimu and Gar and Thailand came over. Because yeah. I remember spying with Gar. And I remember he was orthodox stance and he, he would do this right kick, body kick, and he, he would he would spar without shin pads on, man. <laughs> and so I'm, fra- I'm afraid already. I'm already afraid. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? I should have sold tickets. That's what I feel like saying to you. <laughs> I've been sparring without shin on, man. And then he, he, he kept throwing a, a body kick and then just like, just he'd always find a gap. He'd find a gap and rest it on my body going, oi. And like, he would tell me what he was going to do because he, he wanted me to block it. He'd tell me what he was going to do. But every single time the man still kicked me in the body, every time I would block it. <laughs> Even though it was coming, you know, he just, he just watched how my weight was moving and kicked me. Oh, it was, it was embarrassing, mate. It was embarrassing. And then I, and then I clinched with Thailand. And Thailand was like about, I don't know what weight he was. 50, Thailand was just... 54, really, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's like mid-50s, low-50s. He was quite like outside of Thailand at 54, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know exactly what he's weight because I know he's small. Yeah, my dude is throwing me around like, boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> just... <laughs> the, the thing, when he grabbed hold of my neck, and you have to do this with your head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that was what well. yeah, that was. Well. Well. That's what happened after he clinched yeah, me well. for around about 10 well. minutes. So he was, yeah. he, was, he was good. Yeah. Uh, Duel so, was, yeah, was sick. Yeah. Duel was like trying to fight a frog. You know, when someone just is there, then he's over Dessel. And then he's over yeah. Dessel. It's just like he's teleporting. Duel was, man. He was on some witchcraft movement business. He was so quick. Yeah. Don't know. Like when when the first brought him to the gym, I was at WP. The first brought him over, and he couldn't speak a word of English because Pimu got him from. Um, I can't remember what gym Pimu got him from because he wasn't getting paid for his fights and stuff. Um, and then he came, and I watched him. I watched him on the pads, and I thought, hmm, at least with all these people look round, I might be all right. And then, nope. <laughs> but it was like watching Do you usually watch a cat play with a mouse mm. that's what I felt in the end mm. I was trying to get him to call it up hoping for the bell to go man on the buzzer yeah. hoping it was how long left <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was sick he was sick but 
what he was really, what I really liked about Dewey, what I really learned from him is he throws a shot and then changes it as he throws it. So you throw a shot, get your reaction, then change the shot as he's doing it. Mm. For me, that's more dangerous than someone can hit as hard as they can from that right hand. If they shot me the right hand, you know, if they bang you with that right hand, it's going to hurt you. But mm. it's the ones that show the right hand and then you see that net kick come in. <laughs> where's, where's the net kick come from? Like, you know what I mean? You just saw it on the video afterwards. You, know you better go check on Google Maps. That's all it takes to that person. So. Yeah. It's it, it, it is it is it's, it's interesting and, it, and it's it was an eye opener seeing those guys and seeing it quite early on and seeing um, what the top of the food chain guys are you know what I mean the yeah. real the real thing and we felt I feel quite honoured to be able to just see that 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 was in Wolverhampton that was in Trojan yeah. in Heath Town no These, windows like, no windows underground a block of flats Market. do you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> block of on a carpet. Do you know what I mean? Some of the top, top, top fighters from Thailand were fighting there in Heath Town in Wolves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it, it, crazy, it, it, isn't it? But do you remember when these people broke their toes in that carpet? Oh, you remember God. when uh, was it Damien? Damien did it, didn't he? I think Damien did it. And I looked at his toe. I just thought that don't look straight, you know. But <laughs> no problem, double, and he made him a double kick. Oh, look at his toe. I'm just thinking, all I could think of is where's the seller tape for the carpet? Just tape the carpet back down because there's something wrong. Uh, Damien never showed any pain, no, man. That's the thing, man. David's like a cyborg, you know? Oh, uh, Damien was, he was a monster. But I only worked with, Tony just give me names to mimic, like, people that you train. So I'll get, like, Damien's MO. Like, I knew what Damien's style was, so uh, I didn't um, necessarily get the, it wouldn't be, um, he was like, oh, we'll go. He said, oh, Damien. So I knew, like, I've got to try and switch my stance. If I can, if not, I've got to kick solid off the back and I've got to send that jab out. Then with, when he said, oh, go, go like Carla, that would be, okay, I've got to let my hands off. Then I've got to put the kick in. Mm. And then he said, oh, Liam which was like kick and move like a little bit more but it, you that's how the only way i knew what we some of the conversations he has with me and when i don't even know somebody's hit me now i don't know but <laughs> when, who's to, is this tony or or damien like where many times i think tony's hit me but <laughs> must be a traumatized person bro <laughs> that's what but no he, he gets the he gets the results or Will and I could work it out, but I couldn't. I couldn't get all the information, but I could get the person and what the style was. Mm. So I watched. I watched loads and loads of pro tricycle fighters. Loads of them. Watch all of them. I could. I could mimic the styles. We trained with them to do a job. Do you know, we've trained with them. So you know, like if Will comes into you, mm-mm. so you know it's like Will's pressure. Mm. Uh, and then I thought, uh, do you know what after after I put out Tony's um, video the other day Tony's interview the other day and um, for anyone who hasn't seen that it's a wicked interview and at the beginning of it there's some there's some um, from fight clips of like fighters you're on there Dean obviously you know what I mean badging up people and then but there's some early ones of Will on there man kneeing the granny out of people man I was like oh <laughs> I was like Will man yeah. We do. Oh, look, the, the real thing was right when I first watched Will. I, I didn't meet Will to like years after because yeah. Will had just finished. He was setting up his own business and didn't mean to years after. But you know when I sparred him the first time, I thought he's not been in the gym that long, and then he did exactly the same thing to me, and I was there like, oh Jesus! Do you just want, <laughs> you just want to go home? Do you just, you just feel like? Taxi, or give me a taxi number because I can be able to drive. Mm. But he, he's he's sick, and um, but with Will, I got the knees from Will style, so I developed my knees from because when people like talk about they'll say about my knees, it's not that I'm nowhere near as good at kneeing as Will, but I just learned how to throw it, and it, it was just when I started learning to throw the knees. 
you know, like you start stopping people and stuff, and then you start working out that then Tom tells you when you jump the ring, you're not allowed to knee. I said, What? What do you mean? It works, what? man. What are you doing? Wait, wait, what do you mean? I'm not allowed to knee. So I'm sure this is four rules. You'd be like, No, you're not kneeing. You're not one dimensional. If you stop a couple of people, they'll stop you from using the weapon that is your main weapon because you've gone through so many people. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah. Got people, or you've lost to people. It doesn't matter if you've won or lost. You've gone through so many fights and you rely on one weapon. Mm. And then when he told me that um, on one fight, he said, oh, I, don't mean, I don't mean to knee. If I can't knee, that means I can't clinch. And then he just comes out with like mad stuff. So we worked on that basis and sometimes it wouldn't be a disagreement it was like i would be annoyed at the fact i can't use my favorite weapon mm. and the other person's not disadvantaged but you are so you like but then i don't really want to go back to the corner and talk to tony and tell him that i don't agree <laughs> because the opponent must even the one <laughs> It can't be more like Tony would beat me up. You know what I mean? So, that, yeah, you, do you know what though? That I remember the story that you told me about. Um, was it Ash when he went to the corner uh, and he was tired? No, I, that, I, I had that story in my head. Anytime yeah. I thought, man, I was like, I'm not telling anybody I'm tired. Allow that. You, you, know you can't. Nah, can't, you can't. Man. That that there <laughs> was just the point of. I thought Tony was going to beat us all up in the corner, <sighs> and then. He just, when he said, you what? I was like, oh, shit. And he said, I'm tired. I just, for me, I just put my back on the ring. I'm in the corner. I turned my back. I was like, I don't want this smoke. Not today. I'm not, I'm not fit. So yeah. I don't need this. And then, that, man. Because, uh, and then after what we're talking, because I think sometimes you thought that Tony might fucking kill you. <laughs> I think he nearly killed you last night. That's the only thing you could say to him because Tony was on one. So oh. it was, it was, re, it was good in the same way as being like you, you know, you just you want to tell someone something, you can't get the words out quick enough before they get clapped. That's mm. all it was. But so, the thing is, though, the thing is, though, you, you you've got to appreciate where Tony's coming from with that because. What you're doing, what you're doing routinely, you know, I, did a, I, I tip my toe in it, but what you're doing is fighting trade killers at a, in, a, in, a, in a, a sport that is high risk, man. Do you know what I mean? It's high risk things that you're doing. You get me? So when, if, you, if you, you can't half do it, exactly, you can't half do it. So if you kind of like, you know what? You know what, man? You know, I stubbed my toe, you know, and like, you can't, you, you haven't got that time because yeah. if you go in there half ball, man, you, you, that's when you can properly get hurt. Do you know what I mean? The amount of times yeah. I've been to, I've been to shows like um, where, where my friends have done like semi contact karate and thing. And you know, yeah. they've got them, them dip foam gloves or them little knuckle mitt things like that. The amount of people I've seen knocked out and hurt and stretched yeah. off into ambulance at those things, supposed to be semi contact. Way more than people fighting full contact. Because the full contact guys, they're trained for that and they accept it and they're ready for it. The semi contact think it's gonna be a brush, but people are going axe kicking all this yeah. sort of nonsense. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I, you, you I, can't I, I, it, it's it's interesting though, but you see sometimes when you're at a show and you're in the back, like you see the ones that can fight and the ones that that, that can put on a show, but the the might not not necessarily have the same um, ethic of like Tom told me. He's always told me from the start: if you go out, you go out in your shield. You mm. go out cold. I know I'm not allowed to give up. I know that I'm not allowed. Yeah, but what that aside, what Tony's saying, what what what's in you? I mean, this over a period of time, you're saying that that's how you are now, and I see that's how you fight. You get me, but. Would you say yeah, from yeah, your upbringing as, as, as a fighter, as a as a fighter, a fighter in life and and life? Yeah, I mean, my you know, like how, go on, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Like in sort of in in life generally, like where you come from, you come from like Bentley and Willingall, them areas there. It's it's like like where I'm from, man. It's like working class thing. So it's kind of like 
being able to stand on and stand up for yourself is it's regarded as a as a good thing, as a positive thing. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So yeah, yeah. would you say that can kind of comes from that and then doing this training in Muay Thai and being pushed and going to the levels that you've gone to have kind of like magnified that a bit, would you say? 100%, 100%. But I think my place has been there in myself. I just couldn't find something that I could find the belief in because I never stuck to anything. Yeah. Like I was good at long distance running, but I gave up that when I wasn't, when I wasn't winning, I gave that up. This is the longest thing I've ever done. But it was the buzz. It was like a map from the first time I walked that, that gym door, I was buzzing. I still buzz now. I'm around the boys, when I'm in the gym, I buzz. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like still, like, there's something. But it's, it's not necessarily about uh, upbringing, but it's about who you put yourself around sometimes, which curves how you feel. Because if you're around someone that tells you, you can't, you can't, you can't, how many times do you say that you can? How many times? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then some people say that they can't, but I've been a couple of people that believe in you. I mean, that's, that, that's what I got in the gym. It was like, it was yourself, from yourself conversations. And I, I didn't know. I just didn't know. And then when you start getting success with doing something, <laughs> you're like, oh, this ain't, yeah. this ain't that bad is it although it's a contact sport but it's like there's there's actually a science to the contact whereas most people see it as being quite like when like for when i was teaching schools i didn't tell the schools that i did for my interview i didn't tell schools i did tie boxing because you seem aggressive yeah like, do, do you know what I mean? you're seen as the a thug, thug not a martial artist you're a thug yeah you know what I mean? And then I didn't tell them, so I just stayed away. In the end, like all the schools in the end knew what I did, but after I got the job, they didn't yeah. know before I got the job. I never went to and said, oh, because this got like a, in when I was teaching in schools and stuff with young children, you don't know if that person will snap. That's what they think. Mm. You know what I mean? But they might find that the most controlled people are probably martial artists. Definitely. Definitely. You know what I, mean? I think so, yeah. I think so. I think so. I, I think I think that's that's one thing I would say that um what was 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 a thing at the time where when you're training in that you you didn't it calmed me down. It made me more chill. I mean I was never like a troublemaker or nothing like that, do you know what I mean? But yeah. I'd have a short temper at times, you know what I mean? And when they go to tie box, you can kind of, I guess it's kind of like a safety valve in it where you release that, you do that inspiring, you release those kind of angers, you had a bad day or bad week, whatever, you yeah. go and spar, you hard spar, and then it's out of your system. When you come out of there, you're glad you're alive, you've forgotten your troubles, man. You, you can't take your troubles in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't, you can't take your troubles in there because you get licking your belt. <laughs> if you're thinking about someone else, like, I hate at work, boom. All of a sudden, that's like your, that's like your memory, mate. Do you know what I mean? So I no, think it, it, it's it, a big it, stress reliever. It, you know what I mean? It, and it, 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 it's a massive stress reliever, but also like my missus fights, Thai boxing, mm. which helps the value of the understanding. Like, just some, do you know what I mean? You just need, like, I know when I need to go to the gym. I know sometimes. I don't want to be that person that's too old to fight. I don't want to be that person, but I know that I'll always be involved in the gym. I know it. Really? Like, in Muay Thai? It, it's, it's you now? Yeah, because it's like, when you leave, as you said, it's like you forget every problem you had before you walk through the doors. Mm. And then when you walk out, there's no problem. I can go through my phone, right? I can go through social media and get annoyed at everyone. But when I've trained... You're like, yeah. I'm not. I'm not that bothered. Like, mm. so yeah. Yeah, it kind of demagnifies demagnifies problems. Mm. It does massively. It resizes things. It does because you you reevaluate, don't you? So you think. Mm. I think I, I think more logically. When I when I'm training for a fight, and I'm probably colder at home, which is difficult with the children. So that is not really. Daddy, like, but when I've got my own time with them, without 
without training for a fight, I feel different. My, like, do you know what I mean? It's just when all I can do is I'll keep, I'll put pictures of people on my fridge and I've got to fight them because that's the only thing that gets me out of bed. That's mm. what gets me out of bed in the morning when everybody else is sleeping. I love going for a morning run because I know that you're probably sleeping. Whereas I'm out on the road. So I'm then... definitely sleeping, bro. <laughs> well, I'm not saying for you. On that. <laughs> you last one, I'm, you keep training, I you? guarantee you I'm sleeping. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. It, it was always, um, it was always that. It was always that. It was always mm. just, you know what I mean? It, it, always, it always will be. Um, changing now of going from not from fighting, but I'll only fight now when I want to. I won't yeah. fight when I have to. And I've got fighters, so I've got to be uh, sensible. Yeah. So let, let's go back to what you were just saying there. You were talking about like you, 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 your partner now, you, you, your missus is a yeah. fighter too. So obviously, I mean... Up until is it up until recently we we sort of doing the nine to five and training as well how mm-hmm. how because that's that's the thing that kind of messes with my head thinking about it like how are there enough hours in the day to train to that level because I know what it was like just to fight three DB fights that I was in do you know what I mean but to train to that level against like some train killer from another country like just bare YouTube highlight videos on you know what I mean how do you how is there enough hours in the day in order to prepare for that? Mm. There's never enough hours in the day, is there? Like, you mm. always look at it. Like, I was working, I was teaching in a school. So I'd do my morning run around about 5.30-ish. And I'd get my five miles in, get back. Because I was a PE teacher, I had to get to work early to do the morning club. And then... Do my day, come back, go for another run in training camp. Another run. Then I'll go on it pads, spa, clinch, get back around about bloody hell in Rugeley. Because that's at least, what's that, about 40 minutes from us. Yeah, yeah man. We used, we used to finish at Rouge like 11 o'clock at night and madness yeah. like that, didn't we, man? Half 10, mm-hmm. 11. Back up. Mm-hmm. But I was fortunate because what would happen was Tony would put me up for the night. So, like, you'd only have to travel 20 minutes from the the gym to his to his house. Yeah. Put me up and we're back in the gym at five. Then I know that I've got an absolute nightmare at work because I haven't done my planning or my marking mm. or, do you know what I mean? So you try to then catch up with your mark and you sat in traffic. That's the worst <laughs> part I've ever done. <laughs> so, Everybody got no at all 100%, man. It was nothing in between. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's good. 100 with everyone. That's <laughs> what it was like, so hard. <laughs> but no, um, it was just, it, it was difficult. Then when I decided, um, like with the school, I didn't, I just didn't feel it. I just felt the hours were too long straining me. You only get a short career. It's not a long one. Mm, mm. But I can go back into teaching if I want to, mm. but I don't necessarily have to can find another source of income. Mm. And, I, and then it just kind of grew from nowhere, but, somewhere that was already there. Do you get what I mean? It was just, and that makes no sense at all. So, <laughs> but it, 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 it grew from out of nowhere. But then when I started thinking about it, I was like, well, can stuff, your amount of money you pay me a year, I mean, I'm just something that I genuinely love. Because in the end, when you've got time away from your family, and I was losing so much time, and you're unhappy and you've got the children the children grow quick. You've also got your fight career. I just don't feel like I'm old enough to be a teacher yet. That's mm. all help. So I just mm. took it like the, the school went the school went bust. Then I got offered another job at another school, one of my friends because I was, I graduated with him. And then 
I didn't feel it. I didn't want to do the interview. What I wanted to do was enjoy what I do. And I like the, the worst bit would be teaching badminton and then thinking about Thai boxing. Mm. Do you know, your head somewhere else. Like yeah. it, I wouldn't like to do that. So mm. yeah, and I've just stuck with it. And obviously now, given COVID and the current pandemic, I, you, it's difficult now. But it worked out well when it was going well. When it, mm. I mean, it wasn't like where. Um, I I look forward to to going to do my job. You know, and I got to work with some amazing fighters and that makes it all the better. Yeah, yeah. Do you see yourself as kind of like all or nothing with things? As in, like you're saying, you were you were teaching and trying to do the, the doing the Thai, the Muay Thai on the side. But it was kind of like, while you were teaching, you was actually thinking about the Muay Thai, innit? So he's yeah. like, do you know what? That's where my heart really is that's where I'd like to focus and, and like you said it's a small window man it's not like a you know it is something you can do for 30 years if you can do it for 30 years you're a bad man <laughs> or you're fighting bombs innit you know what I mean? one of the two I don't know what you're doing I'm only 21 years old I'm just saying Trev yeah you know what I'm <laughs> no yeah, but yeah it would be for me I can do a job but I don't like when I've got a like when I feel when I buzz around the boys, like it, it's just I love going to fight shows and doing the bit that Tony taught me what to do, which is to fight every best person, given mm. level, which we give away experience, give away weight, never hit from a fight. And we put them in, that's when I feel accomplished. But then on the Monday morning, you've got work again. Yeah, man. And you got to yeah, hobble yeah, around. Yeah, one day. So what's going on today? That's what I need to know. That's tough, man. That's tough. Now, I've always thought that. I've always thought that. So what we, I mean, obviously the, the balance thing, there isn't a balance. Like I, my, my question to you was, how do you balance the family and blah, 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 blah. There, there, there isn't, you just do what you can do. You juggle. You juggle. You just and juggle, my, my, man. Rob Peter to pay poor kind of thing, isn't it really? Yeah, it's crazy. It's constant so, juggling. Yeah. So when when you're fighting, is it kind of like you're taking your family in the ring with you because they're fighting it with you because they've had to go through this whole training camp and thing with you or without you kind of thing? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think you do. I think to to a, a level, but then you have to you shut yourself. I will shut myself off before I jump in. Mm. Emotional shut off. Like it's just like you, that's when it's time to, and then afterwards it's like you can't wait to see people. Yeah. Like some of my friends when they when they talk to me, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But if you talk to me after the fight, we can talk properly. Mm. Like you know, it just goes past your head. But I've always been uh, really nervous. I was always really, really nervous. Mm. Like where I couldn't sleep before a fight. I'd lie in bed then that means the kids don't settle because dad's up again. Mm. Like, I remember my daughter was a <laughs> baby, baby, like young. I was running down my hallway at like three o'clock in the morning because I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't rest and I just thought that it was the right thing to do at that point in time. But the, the balance of it is... Like, now I think I've got a better balance. I don't think you ever get it right. I don't know. Unless you're earning UFC money, mm. who gets it right where you can look after your family and be. And we've all got to do jobs. We've all got to work. We've all got to do uh, like different things. We've all got bills to pay. And if everyone said you could fight every single month, brilliant, but that doesn't happen. You get a pull out, you've lost your money for that month. Mm. And you've gone through, and your family have gone through it with you. Do you know what I mean? Like, they've gone through the whole thing with you, and then you're like, oh, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 it's, I, I've always thought this, and I mean, sort of, I, I don't know, it, it seems like Muay Thai's got a slightly higher profile than back in the day when 
when I was involved with things. But yeah. um, I pr would you say the money's improved to, to, to guys fighting at like your level at all? I don't, I don't know. If it's improved, then send them my direction because... <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think the, the exposure's improved yeah, given yeah, definitely. you been doing so well. Mm. And now people like branching out a little bit more in mixing sports up. Whereas if you were jujitsu, you're jujitsu. If you were Muay Thai, you're Muay Thai. If you're a kickboxer, you're a kickboxer. Whereas now you find more people moving around. So it actually helps it all grow a little bit. Mm. I'm not saying I'm into um, some of the things that you see in MMA, but you can't not acknowledge the fact that it it helps. Yeah. But what, what M MMA helps more. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it, well, this is one of the things I was, I think I was saying to Tony, like, um, obviously like MMA, when it first started, like we, we were talking about this, like UFC one, where yeah. it was Hoist Grace in his gi, <laughs> straight jujitsu. There was like a sumo dude against a kickboxer dude. And there was a boxer who came in there with one boxing glove on in UFC two. I was like, what is this madness? Do you know what I mean? It was it was yeah. the best thing ever. But obviously people have seen that the best thing is to be able to do is be able to fight on the ground and stand up and fight. And the the best method of movement and attack people who are adopted is Muay Thai. You know, or one of them, one of them. I've seen yeah. people use karate and work Chris, you know what I mean? It's, that is pure art is what I like. Mm. Like this when it's when it's pure art. Like I'm more into MMA than like Tony doesn't really watch MMA. I know he doesn't because I tell him all the time. Tony's only like a Muay Thai Nazi. He's a he's man. No, he's he's at <laughs> the time. He's he's yeah, yeah, yeah. and all his planning. Whereas I just watch fights all the time. If that's boxing, I love boxing. Mm. Um, but it, you've got. Thai boxing, you've got MMA, you've got Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu never really, I, I, I couldn't deal with that one. Mm. And they just grab you by your gi and turn you upside down. Oh, <laughs> no. Just drop you on your head, man. That's some yeah. serious things, boy. Some serious it, things. It, it, it's, it's wicked when you watch, um, like now, when you watch some of the, the strikes <clears> you <throat> and the way they put the shots together, you're like, at the very, Thai boxer esque, really. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's like, put some shots up. Whoa! I get excited. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. I, I think I, I, I agree with you about, about the art. I mean, I, I love seeing a tear up where it's like stand toe to toe and man just swinging. I like seeing that, watching that, because it's kind of like yeah. you're seeing someone crash a car, you, people stand and watch this one of them. <laughs> but, do you know what I mean? But yeah. it's kind of like I more rate when someone doesn't get hit. You know what I mean? They can hit and don't get hit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. with the UFC, like Anderson Silva type or Israel Adesanya types where their yeah, movement is... Damage. Stop. Yeah, they don't take any damage, man. I'm not into getting lick. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I, that's why I rate and I think I used to I like watching those guys. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think that might be... Do you know, sometimes be you look at things and you think, you watch, and you have to think about it. You have to watch your opponent you're going to fight. And you look at some of the shots. And then all the, everyone's highlight reels are brilliant, aren't they? Mm. You're looking, mm, I don't want that left hook. <laughs> not today. And not tomorrow. So you need to work this way. <laughs> <laughs> you watch someone that can do it. Like, uh, one of my favourite fighters of all time is Fabio Pinka. I think he's, 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 his quality. Who's that? I, I don't know this guy. The open he's from France. He's, mm -hmm. he's, 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 forever, he's different with it. Like, but he, everything he does, he's doable. Very doable. Because it's not, you see the top ties do it. It happens so fast. You don't know what's going on. Mm. When you watch him, it's like, I don't even know if he's watching the fight or calculating. But you just don't know. Do you know what I mean? When, we, when you watch him move, and I was like, that's, that's it. That way you're not taking the damage. Mm. But no damage, 
I looked at him, but he was at the same way in. I looked at him and I thought he was, I thought he must have been like a, a model or something. I thought they might have like, not brought the ring girls in. <laughs> no, pretty God, boy. Pretty boy. Nothing. Like just uncut, like nothing on him at all. Yeah. And then when uh it, the when uh I was talking to the ring announcer, so who's that? So oh, Fabio I knew who he was, but I didn't know if that was him because I've only seen him on videos. Yeah. I mean, people in real life they look a little bit different sometimes, you? especially on weighing day. And then yeah. and I was looking at him. Can't kind of look at him. You know, you get that awkward look where you can look him. So what is he like you the same weight as you? No, no, he's much bigger than me. He's like sixty seven. Are you beat Liam Harrison? Right. Um but when you watch him move and the things he was doing, I was like, that's that's like the smart little jabs, the little sidestep, the move out, changing stance constantly. Mm. So you can't settle for him because you want to, you you could, you think you want to whack him, but you don't know what he's going to hit you with. Hold on, I'm just, I'm just trying to dig out a highlight reel for him. Hold on. Oh, well, right. on. Look at his face. <laughs> like him but he's he's one of my favorites yeah he's from a, a good gym in France Mm -hmm. Um, come on, man, is it impact? It's not impact, is it? But so, would you say, people... would you say, like the UK wise, the quality yeah. of Muay Thai is because I mean, I, I remember back in the day, like Holland and France always used to be like really big for, for Muay Thai, like the, the, the best yeah. Muay Thai in Europe. Do you know what I mean? And then maybe, yeah. I think maybe Italy. I think they were behind those Holland and France, really. And then UK were up and coming. How would you say that kind of balance is addressed now, would you say? Uh, I think we're one of the strongest nations. Real has improved that much? Well, I think, yeah. But I do think they're still good. The countries are good. But yeah. um, it's now everyone's, you know, like you, you can't even say like a... He's, he's like you know he fights in France because you might know he's had like fifty fights in Thailand for his come mm -hmm. so he's got the influence is moving um, mm -hmm. and you can't put any fighter against an, another fighter really particularly because you don't know so any fight can win on a day it's a fight mm -hmm. do you know what I mean but I do think we've we've grown and I think the good thing is having the the scoring system in. I think that's helped the kids. Like the kids that I coach, they play to the scoring system because mm -hmm. it's hard for a kid to stop a kid that got body shield on, no head contact, shin pads on. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to stop a kid. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at some of the levels, when you go to these these shows now and you watch the up and comers, you're like, geez, we, we're, we're strong type thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting because I think back in the day, you could see um, there was more of like a look outside looking in, more of like a sort of disparity where you'd have <clears throat> you'd have some gyms where obviously they were successful and you could see technique wise were sharp, and then you got other guys that are going who it was just brawling, man. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes when you're in the changing room waiting for people to go on and seeing people getting ready to go on and you could watch and go, you know what, mama's going to get hurt, you know. Do you know what I mean? Because... Yeah. You know what I mean? You, sometimes you felt lucky that we were where we were kind of thing. You know what I mean? As in, we were... How... how our sort of environment. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I don't yeah. think Tony would have pushed us into anything we weren't ready for. You know what I mean? Rather than saying, yeah, just go and fight. See if you win. There was no luck. It was kind of like, right, okay, you're ready. It's going to be a competitive fight. Go and do what you're going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think so. But I think that because we knew the system early, 
earlier, I should say, not earlier, but earlier than a lot of gyms right now. That have mm. taken on to them. some gyms are like they're, they're smashing it. Some gyms have really gone through strong. Mm. But you you had that fifteen years ago, ten years ago. Do you know what I mean? There's, now it's becoming more. It's becoming more pushed. Whereas mm. I don't find like everyone wants to watch the heavyweights fight. For me, I enjoy watching it. And I enjoy watching the powerhouse. Like, do you know what I mean? Because everyone wants to watch someone stand and fight. Because mm. with most heavyweights, it doesn't really go to points most of the time. Yeah, because you get if you get clipped, you go to sleep. That's it. Mm. You're not even tired, so you don't even need your pillow. But you, 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 if you get clipped, it, it's difficult. I really enjoy the smaller fights. With the smaller fights, I really like the the technique, the balance, the distance in the ring craft, and you look at different things. But I, I do think it's yeah, it's it, 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 it definitely moved up. Mm. So thinking about yourself personally, right? Because mm. I know earlier you were talking about you kind of looked at Will as one of the previous fighters at the gym that you're at. And he looked at his style of clinch and he kind of took your, or made your own kind of flavour from that. And you watch people like Crookie and Winston and all these other guys, Rico coming through and watched how they did certain things. And yeah. you know what I mean? Um, would you say, how important was that to you as like a kind of influence to say, yo, this is how I want to go about my business. If I'm going to do this, this is how I want to sort of, this is how I'm going to do it. Or, or wasn't that kind of like a thought, something like something you, you thought about afterwards? Well, all the people I looked up to weren't necessarily fighters and spoke to him. What I thought a fighter was was someone that just lets you know they fight all the time. These guys were just professionals at what they did. Do you know what I mean? And then I wanted to be very much like them but you know, I'd have to oh, well, put my own like, slant on it. Sorry, uh, put my own slant on it. So it'd be like when I first, when Tony first mentioned about me fighting, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, so I, how, how did that come around? Talk to me about I that day. You know, walked into I the gym, what happened? How did that conversation did, go down, man? It, it, did, no, it didn't go down, did it? He almost came back up. <laughs> so, uh, no, he, he came up from Thailand and said, I think, you, I can't remember. I can't remember the way it went. There's someone available to fight, and it was like, I think you, you, I put you in. I was like, pardon. I'm like, oh, he was driving back from the airport. But I picked him from. He flew to Thailand. He was in Thailand for a while. I picked him from the airport. Dropped him back. Yeah. And I was like, I was saying to Wayne, I was like, bro, I've got a fight on. I'm just shitting myself because, like, so you'll be all right. And then, so, so explain to the people because uh, I think we briefly touched this before in the last the last interview where, yeah. like, you, someone like your your manager, your trainer comes to you and says, "Right, okay, I got a fight for you. Do you know what I mean? I got a fight. I got a match up for you. Do you want the, Do you want the fight?" And then you say yes. What goes to your head yeah. from there? He didn't say yeah. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so okay. So, all right then. So I theoretically, no, but I was too scared of him to say no. My body told me no. He told me yeah. So we were no. like, a fight where he didn't even. I was there like, yeah, yeah. He drove the car. He's not even running. He went a breath. I was like. Oh, no, but say, okay, so hypothetically say like, okay, you've accepted a fight. Yeah. And then it's in four weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. What goes through your head? How do you deal with all of that in your head? Because like you I said know, before. People, was that the start? But, or? Yeah, at the start, at the start. And then what, what, how right. that's changed to now. Do you know what I mean? Where you got, you know what yeah. I mean? You, when you're in a fight, you're in a fight. But when you, yeah. you say, I'm going to fight in two months time, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, so I, how, how did you cope with that? When it was 
every day was a day that was lost when I first started. Couldn't do enough in a day. Like you couldn't do enough. Like you'd go running, you do fartleks, you do. You know what I mean? And the, uh, this is all in one day, and you're blasting constantly for like mm. six weeks. You need to make sure the only thing I can't do is lose on fitness. Can't lose on mm. fit. I can't be on fit. Like that's the one thing that I promise I would never do. Mm. Now it progressed into you, you just because you get old, you get a little bit smarter and wiser with it. So like I have to listen to my body a little bit more. Mm. Think about, okay, so if I go and train with you right now, okay, what have I got on tomorrow? Before I train with you, go and train with my dad, go and train with Tony, then go running. Like, that would be easy. But it, you have to, it's, yeah, I think I listen to my body a lot better now and we work around things like being injured was a big thing at the start of my career, being injured. Mm. That would break my world. I mm. mean, like, you, you just, if I hurt my foot, if I hurt my hand, I did have my weapons, I wouldn't be the same. Whereas mm. now, it's like, I don't know what I'm going to fight with. I don't know what's going to, something's going to break, but I just don't know what it's going to be. So you kind of work on, like, now, when I, you know, like, when uh, I can't do the fight then, I thought that tie, I hit him. I knew I had a fight a little bit later on. I think I had about eight weeks after that one. I was meant to go again. I hit him. I knew I'd done, I knew my hand had gone, but before that, I would have been a panic when I was mm. like novice coming through. Whereas when you get older, mm, okay, let's just, if we work out, let's go safe ball for a little bit. Let's play up safe ball and work this out. And you work different ways. So it's just mm. how people react. And you see it all the time. Yeah. I find it hilarious when. I see people panicking because you, when you've been a, it's not the same that I'm old, but when you've been around for a while, you see some of your fighters panicking. But I've, I've got the sniffles. <laughs> okay. Sniffles then. That's what you've got. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you've still got to go in. <laughs> and that's the way it is. But then it was just, for me, it was much, much more difficult at the start of my career because you, you look at someone that's trained for you, you overthink it, you really overthink it. Whereas now, it just jump on the scales, see my opponent, I know I've got to fight him, and I'll see him the, like, the next day. When I get in, I know when it's game time, I can switch it on. I know I've got it now, but I didn't know I had it then. I was like, I'd be so nervous of not switching on that it'd burn me out. Mm. So, yeah, when, like, mm. do you know what I mean? You, you'd be so. Just can I do like can I and it wasn't the fear of losing, it was like the the nerves would come that like really early on the nerves would come so strong. Whereas now I get nervous when I'm not nervous. Really? It, it, it just reversed. Like, <laughs> I, just, I don't feel like I'm really here. So then then Tom will come out like when the bell goes, you know exactly what to do. You hear ding, so oh, he's here. So you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you might have left me. You might be back in wolves. So, yeah, but that was that. That would be the the major difference. The major major difference is not not panicking, and then I think you overcome in your journey of a fight career. You go through so many different. Like I thought, uh, God, I can't remember his name. Uh, the one that. The one that punched it, he punched really hard. And I've never heard Tony go, go back to the ropes. So I've come out of round two, back to the ropes. Like we we meant to we, the whole game plan was to pressure him, like mm. go back to the ropes. But don't uh, I can't remember, he said, don't throw your right hand, throw your jab and throw your left kick. But when you throw it, step out. So, try it. He started to work. But I was getting punched all over the place. The way that he hit me like I owed him lunch money. Do you know what I mean? The way that he came out and then when was it? And that that wouldn't have happened in the first bit of my career. That could never have happened. I think what, I, the the adjustment you mean? Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to to comprehend that because if you give me a game plan, I'm good at it, but I'm very I'll stick. To what the game plan is but when you yeah. get like now where i'm much more 
No, I'll say it until we get in the ring. What, what do you reckon? What's the plan? Do we train? But what do you reckon? Yeah. Okay, well, you look at, like, he looks at us, okay, I want you to put a little bit of pressure on. Maybe he's a clinch. See how he's strong, how strong he is. Cool. And that, that works well for me. Mm. When you thought, you're like, oh, Tom, what do you, what, what do you, oh, 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 you start stuttering. You can't get your words out. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Like, that's do, what it was. Do you know what? I, I think listening to you there, right, where you're saying like Tony's, you, you're adjusting your 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 kind of your game plan mid round, mid fight, whatever, right? Because I know that my brief experience is it. I didn't hear Jack, man. <laughs> I had Tony. Everybody shouted, "Jam, kick him, kick, do this, yeah. step to the right." I was like, <laughs> 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 I didn't hear anything. I, you, I didn't yeah. listen to anything. <laughs> I'll tell you what, mate. You have more composure than me, fam. You know what I mean? I was just in there fighting for my life. I didn't. I didn't. Like, it wasn't. It, it, <laughs> getting more composed now, but I'm getting hit. Like, like when uh, I fought the big one, uh, my mom, and I fought him, I, I, I went up to 60. I can't remember why that was. But when I, I fought... Uh, that mo the, 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 I sent I sent him a message right after the fight because the way he ran after me, I was there like oh, I took his lunch money on one day, <laughs> like you know what I mean. That one day I was took his lunch money or something from him because I don't know why one man would do this to another person. <laughs> but it is like it, when when you can't hear, like I couldn't hear anything. Yeah, but he, I can't remember it. It was a knee. I couldn't hear a single thing. So you're in there on your own, and I was relying on, I was trying to lock the corner, and, and Tony was shouting at me, but I was trying to listen to him, but I couldn't hear him. What's he saying? Like, but it, it was just funny. Oh, look at this. When the kids coming in, that's all I heard. <laughs> and then you hear, when he hits the knees, you're like, oh. <laughs> Serious man, serious. It's it's, it's, it's it's a crazy thing, man. It is a crazy thing, and I think I mean obviously we, we we touched on a bit about um the sport kind of developing and how I mean how it compares to something like UFC, how it compares to MMA because I mean MMA at the moment's got a lot higher profile than Muay Thai. Yeah. Um. So I guess I'm not sure if the the money is better across the board, but at the top of the game. I'm pretty sure it's better than the top of the game for Muay Thai, would you say? I mean, my, yeah, my perception. 100%. 100%. Mm, do you know what I mean? So the top of the game is like big cheddar, big, big cheddar. But well, I guess that probably doesn't roll down all the way down. You know what I mean? Oh, one sec. Georgia Trojan didn't he fought in that tournament for $1 million? $1 million. Mm, yeah. The kickboxing fight. That's the biggest pay that I've known. But if you look at UFC... I don't even know what Conor McGregor got the other day. What he earned, I don't know. But he'll be big numbers. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And boxing probably earns bigger money as well. Mm. But it, yeah. it just is what it is. You do it because you it, It's strange. It. Well, what, why do you think that is? Because that's what, that's what I can't understand. I don't understand why Muay Thai um, hasn't got that shine. Not just Muay Thai, just kickboxing in general. You know what I mean? If you look at kickboxing... You know what I mean? Some people can't tell the difference between the two things. You know what I mean? But it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Th those things you don't see on TV regularly. I remember like yeah. when, when we first started doing uh, Muay Thai down at Trojan, right? They used to have, um, was it, was, what was that thing on Eurosports, man? They used to have all the K1, K1 Max. Yeah, K1 Max, yeah. And there's also um, Channel 5 then as well, weren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Going with the fights. From the teleport room, I think it was Logan. I think that's right. Yeah, Steve Logan. Exactly. Right, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There was all those shows, man. There's all. Those... I think that was the first time I saw Liam Harrison fight, man. He was like about fifteen or something. <laughs> so you just, just writing off a kid, so you know, writing <laughs> off a big man. You know what I mean? Just like waded into him. It was on. Was it night of combat? I used to used to go out on the yeah. and you come back and see it at three o'clock in the morning. Night of combat. You know yeah, I mean? so partying in wolves and come back. And just make sure that I'm like sober enough to switch my TV on. Wait for the fight. That's all used to happen. Because you know I mean? it was so late. 
I don't want to sell my house. I'm not going to fall to sleep. But we'll get out. Uh, but no, they, I, I don't know what that happened. I don't know. Um, but it, it was, it, I think it might just be that people don't, people are talking crap now more than they used to. Mm. But with MMA and boxing, they all, for me, they talk a lot of smack. They talk a lot of, I'll smash you up, I'll do this. But everyone knows that they're all friends behind the scenes anyway. Do you know what I mean? You've, you've got to share the ring with someone. There are some common hates with Muay Thai, I think, because of the respect aspect of it. Do you know what I mean? I find it... You when you like the, average, the average viewer doesn't really want to see it, they don't think it's a big thing. Yeah, because it's not... It, it, I, I, I can't explain it, bro. It's like... It, it's like... Um, it's not that people don't want to see, but it's also, it doesn't match the etiquette of how a lot of the fights conduct themselves anyway, as, as in my opinion, gentlemen. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? And what, we, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, if I imagine you show up at a weighing, mm-hmm. so I'm going to punch your, I'm going to punch your face, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this and that and that. And maybe some fighters do it, but you find it very much rarer. Whereas in the UFC, I expect it. I'm shocked yeah. when I don't see it. When they, when they do the face-off, when they're all in the face and giving it this and dashing bottles yeah. after each other and all that kind but, of thing. Mm. Like they get like really good exposure, even for the weigh-ins. Uh, I did really enjoy the Mayweather and McGregor, that the the press conferences, that when they went around just ripping each other. I found that hilarious, but then everyone knew we were flying the same plane. Mm. So if you're that mad, like, wouldn't you just turn around and clap someone in the head? Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just to so, make more money, isn't it? It's just to make more yeah, money. Yeah, it was. Mm. And, it, and afterwards, it, it's all good. But I just, I just, I don't know. We tie boxing. I think one championship took it to a different level, especially mm. putting in all the ties they put in there, like the ties they're throwing in there now with them little gloves on. It's exciting. Like, I enjoy, like, I look forward to waiting for one championship on the Fridays. I enjoy waiting. Yeah. I, I, I think that's, I think that's amazing having that on YouTube, you know, do you know what I mean? You can watch that. Yeah. You know, True. And that, like, like, no, it's, no it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That is wicked shows. Yeah. But the people they're throwing in there and you look at the toys they're getting, you're like, oh, God, I think they're going to try and ruin every Farang boxer that's ever walked with her. <laughs> They ain't sending the easy ones, are they? Mm. Like uh, one of my favourite fighters is uh, Super Black, mm. and when they, when they signed him, I was like, boy. And then um, I was talking to is it Tony, so Super Black, and then I was like, oh, I'll probably I'd have a blast. Don't know how to get on, but then. Do you know when you see a man that's just been to put him in there and he belongs there? Like, mm. elbows come from every direction. Mm. <laughs> I don't need any more cuts on my face. I'm telling you that now. So, but um, no, it's good. They're, they're, they're doing really good things. And now, because they've opened the roster up, I was seeing Jacob Smith got signed. Um, the Southern Open of the UK. Mm. Uh, Andy Epson signed. Liam Harrison's there. Jonathan Haggart is there. Liam Nolan's there. So he's, he's just trying to trying to get more more people out there to to kind of build the sport, not just there but here. Mm. If you've got if you've got ten world champions, you put a show on ten serious world champions, not just because the belt, but mm. ten people that have beat decent people. Put a show on. I'd rather watch that than watch. 45 fights in a little show. Do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd rather watch that. I'd rather watch the quality over the smaller things. But we... Yeah. We, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Don't even know yeah. Question, but you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, it, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. And I think that's definitely moving in the right direction because it's Muay Thai, even though they've kind of... It, they've adapted it to kind of be more palatable with the people who watch MMA in it because they've used like yeah. MMA gloves. They're fighting yeah. at Octagon or something. Did they still fight at Octagon or fight in a ring? 
the changes is different different some shows you get the ups yeah. one yeah, so they've kind of changed it. They've changed it to fit in with that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's 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 interesting, but it, it, it's wicked to watch because of the the level of the fighters. You know what I mean? So okay. yeah, it's 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 it's, it's mad, man. It's mad. But it, it, that's one thing I've always kind of had a problem with the reason why people fighting in Muay Thai because it takes no less risk than MMA. It's no less risk than boxing. It's high, it's high risk, man. You know what I mean? It's high yeah. risk. Do you know what I mean? And the amount of time that you've got to sort of put into doing it to get to that level, you know what I mean? Yeah. Should be compensated, man, because you, you, you're ramping, man. You're ramping with your life. Definitely, we don't have a lot of promoters. To, like, you've got to sell so many tickets to be on the show. You go yeah. there, that's another headache. Mm. Then, like, it, it, it's just, it, it is high risk, but it's just, what they expect and what I like is the 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 way that they present it. I enjoy it because you can enjoy it and there's no one getting like anything from you. Do you know what I mean? It's like not like gotta go and spend forty quid to go and watch this show. It's there free and you're watching elite level fighters. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you're yeah. gonna watch from the start to the finish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, and that's what I really enjoy there. I'd love to be there. I'd genuinely love to fight with yeah. any of their fighters around my way. I'll fight any one of them. But it's, it's just waiting for that phone call. It'll come, man. It'll come, man. Trust me. It'll come, bro. It's, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, like you, you talking there and like you were talking about, I remember like in the last interview, where we were talking, I was asking you what belts you had, and like you couldn't even remember what belts you had. Start, <laughs> you couldn't remember what time. No, I know now. I know now. You, 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 <laughs> you memorize them. You memorize them. No, I don't know. No, no, it's too late now. It's too late. I'm, I'm gonna look up. <laughs> now, but what my, my point is? My point is, is that to me, it doesn't sound as if like having the belt is like your primary concern. Your primary concern is who you took the belt from, who you fought to get to the belt. You get yeah. me? It's Would you say that's been, true? Yeah. So it's been that way. I don't, I never, like, some of my best wins, I mean, it, like, the the belt, it, don't get me wrong, like, it's nice to have the belts and some mm. belts I've got, I really, I really like them. Yeah, man, they look crisp. But some of them, you're like, it's a bit crap in that fight. And then you look at some fights where there's no belts on the line and you perform. It was never about the belts. I didn't, like when Tony said, like, I wasn't like a Brit, I can't remember, I can't remember what time it was. I wasn't there for, a, I wasn't, there's somebody meant to be fighting or something. And Tony said, no. So Tony, like, it, I think it was my second fight, my third. So Tony's got the British, the British title. The belt doesn't matter. But he's not going to go. He won't go the distance. There's no point in me training you for it, is there? And then it, from there, you kind of like, like, it took me how long I lost my belts. It's only when I spoke to my mum and she told me my belts were at her house when I found them. So I couldn't find them. Because you don't I had pictures taken with them. Like, I had pictures taken. And then I was a couple of. Like, and they're my belt that like, they're out now but so, I feel like I've lost I was like oh, damn this stupid they're here I was like mm. oh so I went there and then when that diamante thing fell off it I was like these belts don't mean nothing do they like, <laughs> when you pick them up and put them off and things fall off you know like, oh. <laughs> like <laughs> so oh, yeah <laughs> Because it, do, it does seem to me like you were saying about you were in that tournament and Tony was kind of saying, well, do you know what I mean? If you're going to do it, you want to do the toughest way to prove it to yourself that you are the, the winner. Don't take it easy. I was wrong. And... Tony told me to go for the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But no. Yeah, it, it, it was always the toughest route. We've always done it. We've we've just done it that way. And you get some people, like, 
what I hate is I don't mind losing to anyone. Mm. Just beat me. Do you know what I mean? And then you can kind of deal with it. You go back to the gym, you lick your wounds, you, you, you get on with it, you just get on with it. What I don't like is when I feel like I've not, and even if I win, it doesn't take that pain away. Do you know what I mean? Where you just, oh, shit. Like, how many times I was just in a strop for days? I was like, and I could turn around and call my friends, but I was crap. But because you've, because you've knocked someone out, they enjoy that, but they don't understand. The quality of the performance was pretty poor. Mm. The, the performance wasn't right. It wasn't there. Can't explain it because the, they're not boys. They just come along for the drink. Do you know what I mean? They come yeah. along for a few beers. Oh, going, do you know? Do you yeah. know? Yeah, man, that's it, isn't it? But <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's like, I like doing it when it feels that I've earned it. So I don't, the belts. No, the belts don't really mean. I think they mean more to my children than me. Mm. Like the the belts, are like you know, like my son, had, he uh, put on his WWE belt the other day. Bad, he's, bad. The, he's the he's the mixed diamond. The mixed diamond. I couldn't <laughs> wait in myself. But like just but that's what. If they look to that, that's good. But for me, that's massive, man. That's massive. That's so. I mean, how, yeah, how do your kids kind of do they think like daddy's a superhero? You know what I mean? Like a pride thing, like when you're, when you're going to work and doing your bit. Daddy's a bad cook, is what they probably tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, you've got I, no I, skills. You've got no culinary skills, brethren. You work, is it beans? And you're on a beans thing. What are you, what are you doing? You don't know. You don't know about my curry goat yet. Yeah, I'll show you one day. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> well, excuse me. No, I can't make no jollof. I can't make no jollof. Jollof. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they love. I think they enjoy me fighting. They don't like when, when I'm hurt. They don't. They don't like that. Like when, just like I found out my my son was on a. Uh, I think he found it on Instagram and I was fighting with that that toe, cut my head open. Um, and we we just getting into it. I just didn't think anything of it. And then all of a sudden, someone's like, oh, Dad, I watched it. I was like, huh? And at this point in time, he was like seven years old. Oh, so you haven't goodness. watched that. Have you watched that? So I went on my iPad. What was it? Because I still couldn't oh. work out. But it wasn't televised. So, because he had his iPad, I think he must have gone through his mom's Instagram. Mm. But jumped on there, gone through my uncle's, my uncle's stream the fight. My son was watching it. So then, when I called in the morning, I was like, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, like, I'm okay and um, I can't wait to see you or whatever. Mm. But, yeah, Dad, is your head okay? I was like, huh? She's like, how did you know that I've got? That's a weird question. I was like, mm. Son, how did you? How did you see? Like, so I've watched it. No way. I didn't even watch the fight myself. <laughs> like, I think how did done this? And then, so I went on. I went on my iPad, and I think it's. It, I don't know if he got into his mom's. His mom let him on, and he watched the fight. Mm. But they wanted to be there. They wanted to be at the, the my, like my daughter said, oh, Dad, can you do one more for me? And I was, what would you do? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? That'd be amazing to do one more with my daughter. But wow. then also, when things don't go according to plan, like the last time, and they don't go that way, I would never want to see me get. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's, that's the balancing act in it. That's the balancing act in it. It's between yeah. like, you want them there and it gives you that lift. But if someone goes Pete Tong, you don't want them there. Do you know what I mean? But Yeah. You don't, you just, mm. it's not, it's like, it, you just don't want them to see. Like, you don't want to see the, the bad bits and nothing bad had happened to me until when that happened. Mm. And the only thing I could ask was what, what, what was I hit with? What was it? Like, do you just want to know? Do you know you keep asking people and no one's answering you? Well, they're answering you, but you can't hear them. <laughs> well, oh. 
Yes, we. <laughs> the whole time. So, um, but if I'd have brought, because I, I, I wanted my daughter to come along for them for that one. Mm. Um, but but I knew it was going to be a big risk. And anyway. we always knew we knew it was a big risk. The weight was wrong. The 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 training camp didn't have the time. It was just not not seeing me not be a hundred percent of me. And it, that's why I just. I was there like, yeah. oh, just yeah. like it. Then I've got to think about them. You've got to think about, like, are they okay? Like, even on the run up, so you're distracted already. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You'd have to have someone that's with them constantly, all the time. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry or panic. Yeah. And you don't need that on your head when you've got to jump in and start letting some chicken on some, some monster. Yeah, you know I mean, from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, it's 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 an interesting one, isn't it? Because I mean, like that. Uh, obviously, like your kids are a big part of you. Do you know what I mean? And Muay Thai is a big part of you. And you know, what I mean, when you go in there, I know. So you're taking them in there with you, yeah. sort of in your head, in your heart, when you're fighting. Do you know what I mean? So having them there, it could be that'd be a tough one. You know, that'd be a tough yeah. one. I think it's one of those kind of things that you just have to think about. Mm. Especially having like with my two stepdaughters, like with those two as well. And if I got it, if I, I didn't get it right, then because we don't get, he's not saying that I'm going to get a warm up. Do you know, he's no one. So I don't like warm ups. Yeah, I heard that before. Like when I, I lost my last one, I just need a couple of warm up fights. No, I'll go back in again tomorrow with that guy one more time. We can do one more time for me. So, do you know what I mean? But it was not. He's not arrogant. He's like the, the sense of, of of what we said earlier. It's like going back to what do you want from it? What I wanted from it was just I didn't ever want people to turn around and say world champion of this or whatever. I did it because I didn't know I could. You know, I just wanted mm. to prove. And then we start. So what can you do? Test yourself. Test your, your limits. Yeah, and then being constantly pushed, being pushed in the gym, like with the lads that we were training with, and just realise that no one can put a, a ceiling on your building. Do you know what I mean? You, if you put yourself in, under a ceiling, then that changes everything. But when I was. Never, never, wasn't ever interested in belt. If it was about beating world champions, and world titles have now, like it, it, you know, my first, but the, for me, I thought the first one, my first world title, I thought it changed everything. I thought I'd change my mindset, I'd do everything. I only had nine fights mm. so it's like when you're fighting with these people but then when you're beating people that those world champions are lost to what's the belt the belt worth mm. you know what i mean but the person you fight is worth it yeah, oh, yeah. you just go and keep the pretty belt over there and then i'll say over here but then we'll meet in the middle mm. oh, it did. Oh, i was never never really been into it never never been a big fan mm. maybe i should be who knows? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it's one of those, man. T- to me, you come across as like a throwback, man. Old school. You're old school. You're, you're a young dude. To me, you're a young dude. But you're old I'm school. definitely young, bro. You, you, shut your noise, man. You, you're, 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 you're old school, man. <laughs> you're, 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 you are <laughs> no, no, no so it, it, what, what I was saying is like, yeah, I, I see you as kind of like a throwback and old school in the way that, in the best possible way, in the way that, do you know what I mean? Like the belts aren't the thing, it's what you achieve to get to that, do you know what I mean? And like every step of your journey, you know what I mean? Which is, the, to, to me, this is the gold dust of this conversation. Every step of your journey, it's been about, pushing your envelope, you get me? From when you first started, you first started watching and then you got to the point where like you overcome something and then you got well and you said, right, okay, I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna start licking pads and learning how to 
defend myself to fight. And then you almost tripped up and fell into actually fighting. You know what I mean? Tony put the put the offer on it. You were like, Ross. Two twos, you started fighting. And then you went from fighting. For, after your first fight, you went to Thailand, didn't it? After your first fight. Yeah. Yeah, please try to Thailand. Yeah, we're off to Thailand. One fight, went off to Thailand. Did you fight in Thailand? Yeah. You know what I mean? Every, at no point, to me, at no point have you tried to... You know what I mean? At each point, everything that you've done, man, to me, seems like you're coming out your comfort zone, star. You know what I mean? They, they know comfort business. You're sitting on a bed of nails at each point of this conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. Like, when I called you over there and I was firing... And you know what it was when I was firing, and it mm. just happened. And you start sending, you just, it's a good job that I didn't get anywhere near my Instagram. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, when, when we was talking, I was like flipping it, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was just fully on one. Because it just feels like sometimes, like, although you push yourself, you push yourself to a limit where I just think that other people should be. The same, like if you've, mm. you know what I mean? Like I'd, if I've got something with you and I want to fight you, I'm going to send you a message, like not rude, or I'll see you at a show. And I'll be like, oh, when are we going to get this on? What's going to go on? Like now it's like, I can, you can send so many subliminal shots, like through social, as long as you've got social media presence. And it wasn't ever about that for me. I wanted to just prove that I could do it, but I didn't, when I started to, to become uh, like, su- like successful in a way, I didn't win all my fights, but when I was becoming successful, I got to 55. I, said, I was saying, I was talking with Tony and Liam, and so when I got to 57, got to 57. So, so I was fighting people 57. Now when I got to 59, fighting 59. So now I want 61. 61. No, no, I want 68. Yeah, it was oh, always... That's a big jump, man. It was that's never, like, it was never... Do you know what I mean? It was never, it was never, it wasn't planned. It was just the way you you almost see how the how it plays out. It's, do you know what I mean? But then you've got to go, you'll fight someone at 59. Then, you know, three months later, you've got to come back down to, like, the lightest I thought I was 52.5. Hmm. I went blind. I couldn't see, and all I heard was "there's no problem." And I can't say there's a big problem over here. I don't know what problem you can't see, but there's a big problem. So hmm. I thought 50, 52. Then I, I jumped up and I thought fifty. I think I moved up 52, 52 and a half. Then I went to fifty nine, and it was just constantly. I was always, and it was it was just because. I just want, I just, all I wanted was the opportunities to fight the best. And I'm like, is he good? And if you, as long as they're good, 100% I'm on it. Like, mm. 100%. Like, you don't, and then it was, jumped in that tournament and was in an odd gym topic, choose, he's good. I went in there and I was like, I just want anyone of these locks. I knew I had absolutely nothing to lose or every single thing to gain in my head. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then when I when I looked, when we got there, uh, and it was Gert, it was Gert Sawali. I don't even know. You know Gert, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I've met him, but I know you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and he, he came into the Wayne. And I looked at him, and I've seen people lying on the ground when they're making weight. We had breakfast that morning. <laughs> Do you know how nice that was? Yeah. That breakfast. I walked into that, that Wayne with a Mars bar. Jumped on the scales, came in light. Then I'm, I'm, all I'm thinking was, you can't surely, if you can't walk to the scales, is there a time limit on how long it's going to take to get there? Mm. And then the next day, oh, bro, look, I watched Gert's face and Gert seen him, the lineup. I stood in the ring, I was just looking, I was like, just big man. And then, and then <laughs> Johnny Gert got, and all he heard from Gert was, bro, because I think Tony got there late. Uh, and he was like, bro, just keep your guard tight, man. 
And you know what them kind of words there? And not, and don't inspire you to do much more than do this, do they? Just, just defend yourself as best you can, Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean. It's always been that. I've always been the one that's, that I've always wanted to be the one. Because that's when Yuki Fung was fighting. Yuki was one of Tony's, Tony's first fighters. Yeah. He was fighting at 65 when he was 53 anyway. So he was aspired to be Will Hastings fighting outside of his weight. Uh, Dave Lloyd beat uh, Warren Warren Brown for the, I think he was a world champion. He beat him outside of his weight. So it's always been people move around mm. and just to make the fight happen. And that's what I think at the minute, in my opinion, that's what the, the fight game's losing. Everyone's so strict to 0.1 of a kilo. How about, how about that's a good fight? So, how about you fight him two weight divisions, but jump up because if he comes down a little bit and you come up, do you know what it makes the fights happen? And I've just never wanted to be, never said I'm a bantamweight, never said I was a flyweight, never said I was a featherweight. Just, just I can, I'd just like to, to. To fight, it's, it's more difficult. Obviously, with the bigger boys, it's more, much more difficult because I'm tall. And then when I was fighting the bigger boys, they were they were taller than me, so the mm. range went distant. But you find out a lot about yourself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You find out like, do you really do you really want it? Like that's when I was when you like you, you arrive at a show, you see some like a small person through the door, you're like. Good. I've probably got more in my suitcase that weighs more than you. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's mm. just, but it was never about the weight. I was a, a beat. What was his name? The one they hit really hard. He's Spanish. Beat him. And but I've never been punched in my mouth so hard <laughs> by someone under fifty. I've just seen him. And then Tony was like, okay, just keep it simple. And then you punch me. And when he punched me, I said, oh, Jesus, I'm sure he must weigh about 80 kilos. Because that's <laughs> the one that's you know what I mean? He had like a horseshoe in his glove. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was. It, it's always been that forever. And I don't think it'll ever change. I'll always keep looking. And now it's, it's happening to the boys, where the boys are, are all I've got to do. Um, the guy that you said you'll do podcast with, like if if I put like if I call Jesse, if I call Rick, if I call Sam, any one of them, they never ask what weight. All they ask is what date. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And they're, they're not the the one. They're all ambitious, so it's like the they're, they're not thinking about uh, which I'm really proud of. I'm really really proud of all the boys because they've kept that tradition of doesn't matter. If, if you put in there, every time Tony puts me in there, I must be able to win it to him and put me in. Mm, Does it mean I've got to win it, the it's trust, it's trust in your trainer, and it? it's trust that trust yeah. to say the matchup is going to be competitive, it's going to be a challenge, but it, it, it isn't too much. Do you know what I mean? Because like a, 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 obviously it's a bit of thrown in against the know. Sharks, Bridget. I don't know about that one. I might block his number off my phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's just having. That, but you know, when like with with some of the boys, the boys have got in the gym, like the lads who are coming, like they're coming through well, mm. and they don't care. They don't they don't ask about how many fights have they had, what ways. All I ever get asked from the boys is what date. And then if it's like a, a weight where they've got to drop drop something, but like Sam and Moby, for instance, like. Mm. Um, Sick, one of the best. He's got to be one of the best fighters I think I've ever, ever worked with because it, it, it just gets in there and he works it out as he goes along and he hits concussively hard. But the funny thing with him is he's, he's not, he's not fake. He doesn't look at someone and think, oh, he's bigger than me. The, the thing with him is he'll just show up and he'll look you up and down. So, and then that's it. Mm. Conversation over. Uh, go so what there. do you think that is? What 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 makes a person think that way? Don't know. I think life experiences, and it depends mm. on what the background is. 
So mm-hmm. like with uh, Rick, he's very methodical with Garvey, very, very methodical. Rajan, sharp, quick, good, strong, and attacking. Dassey, sharp. And you've got so many different qualities, but sometimes you you watch something in someone and you're just like, you can only, you watch something. And what I find funny is he laughs all the way up. Like, he's the biggest joke in the room. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, and he'll tell me, gaze. What's going on, Sam? I'll catch him, gaze, don't worry. But like, you know, it's like, like, what do you mean? Like, I'm worried. Like, I need to be a threat. It's you fighting, not me. You can get put in your head. But it, it's interesting how people deal with it. But it, I think it is... I don't I don't know. Um, I'm telling you better to tell you this than me. I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm not educated in that field of work. Mm. Turns into psychology. I, you can just... Some, with All the boys are brilliant in different ways. And I think we've all got a different journey. But with Procho Sue, it's like we've all got different journeys and we'll, we've all had hardships in some way, shape or form. Mm. But we all... It comes, comes back to the family relation again. We all back each other. We, we can all drop the ball. Not meaning fighting, but we can all have a bad day. But there's always someone that I think you should be able to call in your in your family. But, do you know what I mean? There's always got to be someone you can go. So it, it, yeah. it, it, it's good. It's good. But I really like the fact that they're welcoming towards, coming to Pedro Sua, like the, the really welcoming towards, they're all wrapped around each other. So it's not like if you're there or you're not and then you walk in. They're all, they're all just very interested in uh, progressing, I guess. So, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. I, I mean, obviously, now sort of continuing on with Prachal Sur, you are as well as fighting. You're kind of going into um, mentoring new fighters as well. So, how how's that journey been, man? How's that? How have you felt? Yeah, it's been, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I'm not. The head coach there, I'm not the boss there. It's like I'm still under watchful eyes just to make sure I get everything right. But um no, I, I enjoy it and it's good to watch the young ones. Like we've got a few new lads coming through there, and obviously like Luke, Corey. I mean you watch these kids, Zach, Zach coming through, but he, he's not experienced, but when you see them performing. It, it, it's wicked if that's in the ring or just in the gym where they just they might not have even pads with you or they might not have even sparred you. If you watch them sometimes, you're like, or you because I get to spar the boys as well, which is wicked. So I'm still training. I spar them like, geez, you just lit me up. Do you know what I mean? Like, you think I've got to put my game on now and then try and, and I get lit up again by somebody else. <laughs> so, uh, when, um, he, he, I, I really enjoy that, and the the I always wanted to be. I never wanted to be one of them fighters that after the the career's over, they just they just bitter towards not towards the sport, but towards how things have gone for them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I always wanted another avenue. I've always wanted it. I always wanted a route. So I've always from when I was like young. I was always looking at it, but I always looked at the coaching aspect before I could even throw a punch or a kick. But when I first did my judging course with Tony, I think that was only weeks after starting. But I didn't know if I'd be able to fight. So my yeah. my my uh, ideas were different to probably somebody else would have walked in. Yeah. Maybe because yeah. I just thought if I can just work it out and then when I worked out, it was a science. It just transpires into, well, hopefully, I'd hope it does, to the boys now. And that they just, they push on with their journey. Do you know what I mean? And they're, they're going to go, 
they'll go further than I did. I, I really do. I do think mm. because the way, um, the way they are, it's just it's nice, and you get that feeling that there's no one in the gym that doesn't belong there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Think, people... Yeah, man. Oh, Sorry, go on. on. Sorry, go on. No, there's been people in the gym that I just didn't think belong there. Mm. Um, and you, you, if, when that connection's broke and you're trying to guide them, obviously Tony being the head coach, you're trying to guide as a mentor, so you're the transitional stage with the mind, you know, so you transfer mm. from you, not not up, because it's not saying that I'll do this, that or the other, or, but you give them the basic skills and it's just, it's some people, it just didn't, it didn't, sit with me well do you know what I mean it's just like where whereas some like with others that with the others like now I'm really happy with my family I'm really happy with them but we go to the gym we just laugh that's the best thing about the gym is the whole gym is built on someone getting ripped do you know what I mean? We're talking about the shoes, like, what are those? <laughs> and everyone laughs for a bit off Noah. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but that was it. So, yeah. No, it's, um, no, it's, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's interesting. Like, w when I was talking to um, Reese, and he yeah. was saying that he found it, I was, I was saying, did you find it difficult to sort of when you were starting off when he first come down to Trojan and he was like, well, yeah. not really. Cause the, when he came down to Trojan, he was kind of accepted in that. And it was like the generation before, like his brother and Kirkwood and Winston and Eval and all those guys Jeez. where they were training without having like the tuition of, and the coaching of like Tony to help them. Do you know what I mean? They were just doing the yeah. own thing, just kicking lumps out of each other and just super tough. You know what I mean? Then going into a fight, you get me? So it was kind of like, after that, they they started to get people in like Joby and Tony and to help them with things, and it got more a bit more structure after that. Do you know what I mean? And um, it's, it, it was it was interesting. I guess it's the same with you now. So you're you're sharing knowledge that you've got and creating kind of like a like the an environment where these guys are taking that on. So it's passing it on, man. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's proper kung fu flick business, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? You're gonna have the, you're you're gonna be like the the guy with the white beard and the uh, white eyebrows, but passing it on to beard, the no no white eyebrows. I don't say that. I feel like I feel like doing, doing a do 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 on you right now and telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. You know. What I mean. Yeah, I do get what you mean. No, it's, I think it's like like we go through like a lot of storytelling of the fights that have gone before. Mm. You're so under the arc because you get forgetting, you get forgotten. Sorry, mm. so you're forgetting people that you've never known. So what's what's the link? And then when I was fortunate enough to watch my dad used to come back and put videos on, I know I'll never forget it. My dad asked me how I know Winston. Mm. So and I was talking to him for months. Hey, do you know him? I was like, oh, because like he trained me. Dad, like, I was in the gym with him. So, you know who that is? I know who he is. So Winston. So, oh. Then I bumped into Kirk. It's one of the moments where I bumped into Kirk in a toilet. I was like, Kirk, like, because I watch a lot of Kirk Teddy fights because it was on Channel Five. They used to replay him. Do you remember? The replay the fight, so you watch the same fight like 14 weeks in a row or something. Um, and then I was when I was sitting, I thought he's much bigger than what I thought he'd be, and I just thought, Ross, do you know, like, I wouldn't want to take one of his kids. Mm. But when I was talking to him, he's like, well, as well, boy, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I never got this far in, but I, when I spoke to him, and he was, it's admiration for the people that have got time for other people isn't it and then i've never been treated bad by any of the the, the people that have come through from mm. and i would pay respect 100%. to them. I 100%. Respect. i've always said that as well man do you know what i mean because 
You know what I mean? They, they, they were a big deal. You know what I mean? But they were always super polite, super helpful, super respectful. Anytime I've talked to them, do you know what I mean? Pete, yeah. Kirk, you know what I mean? Winston, every time, man. Do you know what I mean? They're just they're good people. Been, good people. Always been good. Like even just when I was talking to Kurt, just just and he didn't have he, he just set up his own gym and I was for advice. Like what? How did you get about your career? And it was just just, just for someone to take time out. But bear in mind, I never had a fight then. Never had a fight. It wasn't interesting for him. I just didn't know. Like I, I knew who he was. So I'd seen him on Channel 5 about 1,500 times when he got them replaying it. But when, um, when he took time just to speak to you, oh, well. and then talk to Winston, I was like, these guys have got no attitude. But then you go to a lesser gym. I went to another gym. I trained at another gym. I went to go and spa. And they just lit me up. That's what they did. They just, and it was just like, no one speak to you because you crap. You don't even know it. I didn't know where my guard was. I didn't know. Like, do you know what I mean? I didn't know how to hold a guard and they're directing me to punch you even harder. I bet you just show me how to protect my face for a little bit longer. Do you know what I mean? And there was no conversation after. Whereas with Trojan, Prejai, Sua, it was always conversation. Mm. Conversation led. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? You start with the conversation, oh, and people turn around and say, oh, how's your day been? Huh? I'm sure you're going to put them up at 15 minutes. I'm sure yeah. you are. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Someone needs to call 999 right now, because I'll call them. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was that. Was that. So it, it's all kind of come through with, like, the, with the lads coming through now. But it's kind of coming through, hopefully, through the basis of this heritage. Mm. But do you know what I mean? There's a way you can do it yourself and there's a way you don't. You've got no problem what you want to do. That's right. But if you embarrass, if you arrive at a, a venue, I don't mean about fighting, but your attitude, it stinks. I don't want to see. But it's, do, you, do you know what I mean? It's just certain things and it's just what you grow up on. Like it's just what. I grew up on anyway, I think. Mm-hmm. And then just being around when I was around you guys when I was when I was like younger and just watching when I could never understand how no one was mad at a weighing. But that sticks with you. You don't need to be mad to perform. Mm. But I mean, I did like you I didn't know, like I watched uh Reese, Reese when he fought at the Civic, I think it was. I bought tickets to go and watch Reese. So it's, it just it just seemed like really cool, nothing, mm. nothing at all. And then I was into at that point in time. I just thought that if you've got a rage, you can do something with it. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Because yeah. you do, you do, you do see the, the 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 difference in gyms. Like backstage, you'll see one man training on pads, like doing a thousand punch combination. And like, my man's gonna be tired before he goes into the ring. And then his, his trainer's slapping him in the face to try and G. <laughs> so I'd be like, what are you doing? What's going on? And you know they're gonna get hurt. You know it. Yeah. My man's gonna get spark out. He's on a stretcher, he is. No question. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, that's that, that's what I was saying, like seeing the difference and knowing how lucky, we, we were very lucky we to are. go where we were. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So. With the mix of, very different ingredients as well with having like role models look up to which is key for mm. anyone role models are key um having the tuition that we had but also like you know when you watch things you know you, know, you can sit and watch something you think you know what that ain't right mm. and then you like I was at a show where was that what made tony out to go and where was that? I think that was Birmingham. And there's a cool guy, a black guy, really cool. Nothing to him, not not big. Mm. And there's, uh, uh, he was fighting, a, I think he was white. Um, but it wasn't what had happened in the change room. It was the difference in attitude towards what was going on. And then when the, it was like when the, when they hit the bell, 
it was like, oh, Jesus. Like, he's banging his head, he's punching himself in the face before the fight, winding himself up in the changing rooms, on the pads. This guy just looked like he just woke up, bowled in, mm. and tore him up. And when mm. he did it, it's the way that he was doing it. It was just like, boom, take that. Boom, mm. take that. Boom. So the amount of times the guy punched himself in the face, I don't think he landed that amount of punches on the other guy's head. Mm-hmm. You know, so much time punches himself in the face to, to warn himself. Well, but you get different attitudes, and I, I just didn't, I didn't draw to it. And I think you might see more of that being because because of you being a heavyweight with a heavyweight background. I think the attitudes change a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? I think you would have seen that you've been exposed to a little bit more to that than I would have necessarily. Mm. I think you would have been. And they'll just yeah. then, for me, no, I didn't want to be like that. And then just constantly looking, and I'd always been looking at people. I think, like, I told myself, and I was told, <laughs> well, it didn't really work out, did it? Um, and I was saying to, uh, I said to Wayne, I'll get at this ball, and when I have a cut on my face, Mm. And then after I got caught, he goes, well, that never fucking worked, did it? <laughs> well, I've got my head split open. And it wasn't even small. Bro, it, it comes down, how big it is, it comes down there, <sighs> there, into my nose. I did and have that photo, it, actually, though. I did have that photo. Yeah, so. No, I don't put the photo on. I'm going to put it on, man. No, <laughs> no. All right, go on, go on. I'm going to block you. Take that now. <laughs> You're getting blocked right next to Tony, I'm telling you. It was, a, it was a good photo because he's got Tony smiling, he's got the belt, and you were like this big <laughs> gush gouge in your head. Yeah, the worst it was is when he told me I wasn't a model. <laughs> when he split, I was like, I came back, bro, and I told him, I was like, Tony, I'm a cook. Because we were going to an elbow, we started swinging elbows, and I thought I landed it. So yeah. I started smiling, thinking, okay, more elbows are going now. And I was looking, where's the cook? Was, there's no cut on his face. It's mine. <laughs> so then I looked at my short, my skin, I was wearing uh, some tanko shorts. And then my shorts started going pink. But the, the worst thing was, I come back. I was like, Tom, I think there was no problem. I said, Tom, but you're not a fucking model. I was like, eh? <laughs> yeah, you're going to on, Darren. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> Oh, you know what I mean? Excuse me. But it, was, it was it was funny. It was one go. of the funniest moments ever. But with, when when our cousin, <laughs> yeah, that fully vex vex. That, that's the one, man. Yeah, Tony looks happy, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> you don't look too pleased. I mean, for me, that's all that was. I'm dead off with all. So <laughs> the A and E journey was a lot longer. <laughs> Real. So what, what title was that for? What title was yeah, that? What belt was that? One second. So he's got to look for it now, isn't it? S3, S3 one. I think that was. That was the S3. Yeah. Um, I thought, sit the chai. Do you know what the worst bit was? It was one of those moments where I got into the moment and we started to exchange. I was like, and then, you know, you start, you feel like you start to retreat and then you start getting excited. Mm. Let's go. So I started swinging elbows, and he started swinging elbows. I had boom. Didn't think nothing happened. And then I threw an elbow, and my elbow landed. My elbow, I think my elbow landed better than his. And then it just didn't like it didn't work out in my head. So when I started, when I started, and I thought uh, we just got, I think we came at the clinch, and I looked at his chest, got you know, started thinking like there's going to be more elbows coming. Nope. Mm. Then I realised the uh, the blood was from my head on his chest. I was there like, oh no! And then <laughs> trying to work out, like all I wanted was Tom to put some ice on it. Every <laughs> my tummy wasn't a model. I sat there. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So um, your hair like your hairline's not there anywhere, man. You're safe, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the funniest moments where. Um, when he went mad, the time he's gone more mad than that. I was, I, he was like, don't get stupid, because I was starting to exchange. But because you're at home, and one of my 
one of my good friends passed away the night before we had a bike accident. He meant to at the show. So it was just my head was everywhere anyway. So I wasn't gonna perform oh, yeah. So all I wanted to do was I knew when I put the gloves on, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. You're just gonna walk it like and Tommy went, I'll just stay cool, pick your shots, da 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 And in your head you're like, I'm going for this. Mm. And then when I got my head bust, I was like, what did you say, Tony? <laughs> what did you say? You know what I mean? It was just one of the funny moments. I had to call my mum afterwards. I was like, mum, there's been a little mishap. <laughs> and she was like, Are you okay? Like, yeah, I'm all right, but I've got to go to hospital. She said, what are you doing? Uh, well, we was we we were we were fighting, and she was fighting, and you know he starts stuttering. He turns up in again. We, we we what happened was mum. We we we, we, so we it was like this. It was like this. <laughs> so, is it true that you didn't tell your mum that dad. you were even and dad? Yeah. Until you had your first world title. Yeah. That's crazy. Talk to me yeah. about that, man. That's crazy. No, we had I had. Um, I played basketball competitively, apparently. Apparently? That's what, really I, apparently. Told. That's what I told them. Oh, right. I think, okay. I, I, was like, I, basketball. <laughs> well, I think my dad, I think my dad clicked on a little bit. Um, and then when I went to Thailand, I said I was going on and I was going on, oh God, because I booked that last minute. I was going to go on like a jungle thing. I wanted to go travel. Thailand to the jungles mm. and all my dad says why make sure you're not getting by to it there you know <laughs> I wasn't going for that I was going to fight and then um when I had to uh, uh, he called my dad had called me I was in Thailand my dad called me and I was trying to lie but my body was in bits mm. I was like, oh how's it been yeah um well uh I, I started to ride uh, in order to get of animal I was trying to ride the elephant and then I fell off. I fell off and then it trampled me. That's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I told them, I, I got back and then I said that, I'd do it, that I was going to tell them when I won my first belt. But I just thought it'd be better. And then... Um, Why? Why uh, Why wait that long? To, so I, just, I just didn't want to... Is it one of those ones you didn't want to scare them or... You wanted to no, achieve something first. Them, they, they were always worried about me anyway because of with mm. my health issues and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like, no promoter knew that I had at that point in time. They didn't know my illness, so wow. I couldn't even. Okay. It, I didn't tell the promoters because the only thing what I was worried about it wasn't anything to do with hiding me. It was like I just thought for insurance, but I'm not going to get on. Yeah. No one's going to want to put you on. Yeah. Like so, we just we just lied, um, and then. Um, came going to see my dad, and it was just the one day, and I can't remember what had happened. I think, I think my brother was in, I think my brother had some trouble going on at college or something like that. Something happened. Mm. Went to my mum and dad's, and then I took all my belts, I threw all my belts in the boot, and then I was like, oh, I just want to let you know that I fight. Mum was like, you do what? <laughs> I fight. And then my dad's attitude was like, fight fewer. <laughs> yeah. And then when I said, uh, and he said, oh, are you are you good? And I, said, I don't know. I don't I don't think I'm that good. Dad. Like, I'm not. And then um, I turned around and said, oh, uh, walked out the car. And I was with my ex-wife then. And walked out the car. I was like, can you go and get my belt to the car? And she was like, are you going to do this now? Yeah, right now. Mm. So then she had gone and got the belt out of the boot. And then I remember when I uh, said, like, Come, I'm, I'm okay. Like, And I'll still say, I'm okay now. I wouldn't say I'm brilliant. And, like, it's not been. Oh, don't, don't get me started on this conversation again, man. Do you know what I mean? I'll come over so here and talk to you it myself. Was, it was just <laughs> that, though. And then when I watched. My mum was like in disbelief. Like she's at so a, a woman asked me, what happened to basketball? My mate put a hint in pattern. 
basketball. And she was looking at the belts, and I don't think she could work out what was going on. Mm. Like, she couldn't work it out in the situation that we were in because she'd just been dropped on her. Mm. And my, my dad was like, oh, you must see good, you must see good. <laughs> That's all I heard. And then <laughs> when he was like, oh, and he's looking at the belt, and then uh, I took like all my other, my, my, like not my world type, like my, my Europeans and my, my other belts, then I didn't have my first world type, and I told them. Mm. I took the other belt and then it was just the conversation well, I'm about to jump out your box you know and then I was there my dad wants to beat me up even more now so, that's it that's it you know don't don't think me and you are size you know yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it the conversation you know I mean? started I brought, I brought you into this world I will take you out back. yeah you know I mean? it was it was one of the best probably out of with my career, probably one of the best moments ever. It was when it was more my little brother knew that I fought, but he kept it, and I was like, "Can't say anything. Don't say anything." Like, and he, he would be like, "Because oh. he's got to lie." Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like I'm, I'm training, and I got him to drop me. Remember where he came was? I got him to drop me. On the top right near uh, the, the the what would be Royal Mail now the top. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. to slap all the way back then that road because if they dropped me around near that gym, I knew my dad knew where it was. Mm. So I just said, oh, "I've got to go. I've got a basketball game around the corner." And the, there was just building then. It was like a, I think it's on the side of the canal or something. And yeah, building. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the um, Premier Inn or something. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it might have been building it. That wasn't there then though. Right, okay. But they must have been building it. And then when they turned around, I said, oh, just drop me here. And I could see his face. He's like, I knew he worked out, there's nothing there. Mm. But I was like, I'll just walk into town, because you don't need to come around the traffic lights. I wait for him to turn, I walk the opposite way, wait for him to turn around, and I just ran back down the road to the gym. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just one of those, one of those mad moments. All because Wayne didn't even pick me up. Yeah, you know, I'm going to block him as well. <laughs> so, <Again. laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I'm not, then I, I told them that, and the, they've been, they've always been like, as soon as I told them that, that my dad's been it, fighting Scotland, everywhere, everywhere that I fought, my dad, my dad's always got my mum, my mum hates me fighting, she's delicate, mm. she doesn't course, like Course, man, course, man, course. You know I mean? course but she's got to be some nice dude the next day, so it's good. See you there. That's, that's the thing, man. Yeah. Yo, I, 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 want to, I want you to reminisce about something. I'm going to show you a video now. You're going to come off screen. Right, I'm going to show you a video real quick. And you oh, tell yeah. me about you tell me about it. When it, when, I, when it finishes, tell me about what your memories of this are. All right. You make me nervous. Yo, that's the world's longest minute in us. <laughs> well, there was no timer. The worst it is, you know, when the man lay down, you really do need to help you out. You got to go out. I don't you... know. I was just trying to stay, I was just trying to stay awake, Bridget. Do you know what I mean? Well, I, 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 I think I've gone to sleep. Remember when, um, <laughs> remember when, was it Little Lee? When Lee passed out, do you remember that? Yes, yes, but yes. I've, I've never seen that. 
He was clean awake and then just went to sleep on his walk. I don't understand what happened to him. <laughs> you Tony, Tony, Tony punched him and hit a switch, man. Something switched off. You know what I mean? But the point is, never used to stop. Do you know, you can get them shots. Like, I was good in it. The now has to be a little bit more strategic. Mm. So what's up is Big Trev goes first. <laughs> Dash Wayne in there. He can go second. Liam can go. Tony had the, um, the, the, the 10 ounce Cletos on. And he beat, beat up Wayne. Oh, what I felt for him, man. I felt for him. And I was doing the timer. I was doing the timer. And I couldn't start it, man. <laughs> We you pressed up? He did like a three-minute round, man. It was brutal. No, 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 nah, nah, I'm, 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 nah. But um, <laughs> he, he, he hit you in your solar plex. Right, and he would do it twice in a row. Mm. But then what you'd do is you'd run to the side and yeah. whack your solar plex again. Yeah, with a left hook. He's trying to take my soul at my chest. Yeah, man. So explain to the people, the people wondering what the hell that video was. That video was Rouge Le Gym. That was me and Professor Tony Myers. Well, me getting broke ass by Professor Tony Myers in the end of the night. Yeah, conditioning circuit where we used to like, it was basically you weren't afraid of getting lick in, to the body. Do you know what I mean? Because it's one of those things. It's oh, like, you damn I'm right, still, I'm still afraid, man. You're lying to the camera because I was that scared. Was, that was that was Liam videoing it. It's only because Liam was videoing it, you know, that I didn't drop. Serious, because no. I was like, you're not catching me on camera. No, dropping. no, no. I'd have taken a knee, bro. Otherwise, it, it, it no. just that when we were back there, like at the at the police boxing club in Rugeley, mm. they were they were good times though. It used to be cold. I know. Like when you used to kick the pad and you couldn't feel your feet anymore, but you didn't know if you kicked the pad or not because you didn't you feet were numb. And then when you Tony did toes, was, you didn't feel it. <laughs> it was good. When he started when he started doing the conditioning, I felt sorry for you sometimes, but I ain't gonna lie. Because I didn't get hit like you got hit. I got hit. No, I got like, lick, man. You got I got that's, that was like, me and you the same weight. <laughs> it's just all right. <laughs> no, I got, I got, I got full ball, man. He used to look at you as well and see if you react. So you had to not react as well because if you reacted, he'd hit you there again. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know? When, 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 remember when you hit the doubles? Yeah, but the bam, bam. Yeah. Mm. Do you know when you need the toilet really bad? Mm. Bam, bam. You have to just leave that ring at that time and you have to grab your bat and run at the door. That's what would happen from <laughs> <laughs> but, No, oh, it was, um, the, 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 that's the, one of the funny ones that when you were getting it and then I don't know what had happened. I just watched Lee just, just do something mad. But it was normal. He jumped out the ring, started walking and just Fainted or something. <laughs> and I was like, what happened to me? And Tom was like, oh, he'll be all right in a bit. <laughs> you know, I he might be dead. I don't even know what's going on with his body. So, he didn't know, man. I think what he was, man, he just didn't have enough oxygen or something. You know what I mean? Something just... uh, it might have been, or just low sugar or something. But it was just, that was the bit of the night that I hated the most. Brilliant, I hated the pinch. I hated when... You have to clinch someone big because you know the conditions coming after. Mm. And you have to expose your body. You get need a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you're going to get need. So you, you expose your body. But some of the... Some, some, no. I remember, I clinch, I remember, I remember clinching with... Um, who's, it was Damien the one time. Then I had some other animal swinging off my neck, man. And I remember getting home, right? And I was sitting on my side. You know, like we used to get home like about half 11. And because like the adrenaline's still going, you can't go to bed straight away. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. I couldn't. And I'd sit down on the sofa. I went straight like, to my breath. Yeah, that's how you like. Yeah. Like I sit down on the sofa now, right? And because someone's been like ragging your neck, I couldn't hold my head up. So <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> my head was just floppy yeah. like this. Nah, <laughs> my, man. All my muscles in my back of my neck just been stretched. Because the, the funniest thing was, horrible. bro. Horrible. Uh, I remember. I remember when 
Damien had to come in. I think you must have had a fight coming in, so Tony must have got Damien in. Damien absolutely annihilated me. Like, he just, he's, joint, he's like a hot knife with butter. Like, you know, you, you, you've got nothing against them. You can't. You just want to make friends and shake hands and just turn them and walk. <laughs> you, know, you know those ones where you're sparring and someone keeps asking you questions. So how do you, how do, you do that body kick thing? Yeah. Stop talking, man. Come on. <laughs> Get a little bit of time. That's all you trying need. To, trying to break things up. Saw themselves getting kicked. All of a sudden, you got questions. <laughs> it, it's funny though, like now when 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 he came in, bro. But when on that that occasion, when he when he walked, and I was like, this. then it was like he'd been off the gym for like he came down to Paradise Room, full and all now, mm. and he'd been out at the gym for like months, like years even. Don't say months, 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 but it was years, and then. He latched on once. I was born this. My car hurt. So I just held my car. And then yeah, I've got these three foot is clean. I felt that before. So, but, Damon's so clinch was disgusting. Because she was the bigger one. She'd have to give me even more rates. Yeah, I hated clean. it, man. I hated yeah. clinching with Damon, man. It's like, for God's sake. Oh. Man. But have you never seen what he did when he came down to purchase you last time, man? Mm. Like when he came down... And it, when he grabbed my neck, I just, I played on my calf. That was it. I was like, oh, my calf's full. <laughs> I laid there for about 10 seconds from one eye shit like this. <laughs> to let me alone. And then, when he let me alone, I watched. But people were like, what well, everyone was punching, the big guy. He, all you could hear, boom, 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 the bottom on the floor. I just put my one eye again. That's what happened. It was like Michael Myers, man. I swear to God, don't realize. When he used, when when um, when when Damon was fighting, I think it was Holland, Mm. and we were getting me the live hair off. Bro, I think that traumatized me. You know, you had to you had to 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 spar him, and uh, Robinson was Robinson was always like, nah, but that. Like he was always that way. Do you know what I mean? I ain't doing that today. I don't come all the way up from Northampton to go and get yeah, like, kicked like that. Yeah, like, I don't come to do that. And then I was like, but we've got to do it because he, he's fighting. We've got to do it. I'll watch you. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch him over here. He'll leave me getting that rep. I'll watch him getting dashed all over the place. So, but it was, yeah, he was he was wicked. And then when it was, it was when. Uh, it was it Carla? When Carla, it's far Carla, she just punched my face off. Carla's like, a, Carla was a beast, man. I rate Carla. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's tough, technical, yeah. everything. Wicked. The way that what Damien did to me in the clinch before that, oh, my, my hands, you know, you try and get your hands like here, but your hands are on your hips. And I could do with you. That's what happened the whole time. She just punched my face off. You know, I just felt like this is so unfair. Like I was just been beat up with the clinch, I'm gonna beat up again. So <laughs> no. Mm-mm. No but, man. No man. Just diff- different 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 beasts, mate, who was training with man. But do you do you bring any of the old old school methods into your training at um in Willanor? I I try yes. as much as I can. Yeah. Like but now like do you know them body shots that Tommy's thrown, I ain't fit for five grams of that. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's hard one. to throw them. Never mind taking them. It's hard to throw them for that long. You yeah, but uh, no, I tried to, um, but like Tony's still there, so it, it's it's like we we work like we work together to make. It's old school for the the method, but he's constantly changing with because he researches a lot as well. Mm. So it's like, I think he said himself that I think some of the fighters he used to train were overtrained sometimes doing too many miles on on the running. Yeah, yeah. And um, you do it with them um, like Will and Yuki and that, like, and whereas now is much more like make sure you get your rest. Mm. But, but it it doesn't change in terms of when you've got a fight, you can hear it 
like when I get to the gym, sometimes he's there. Hey, hey, yeah. And you look and you just look at the timer. Is it round one? Mm -mm. No, no, <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? He breaks your pole. Yeah. yeah, man. But, uh, no, yeah, I try to. Try as much as I can. But yeah. I think just the ethics got to be. Um, if the, the ethic is exactly the same, but the methods have slightly changed a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. through yeah. me. That's not my job to do. My job mm. is to help help him out with his job. Do you know what I mean? Like if yeah, yeah. It, and it is, but things move on, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like from was it freestylers to Trojan? The, the, the methods changed, and Trojan and Prachasu to yeah. new Prachasu with you. Um, over in Will and all, do you know what I mean? Things move on, man. That's good. That's how it's supposed to be. Do you know what I mean? Things yeah. develop. That's how it's supposed I don't, to be. I don't feel like I've moved on. I feel like we because I went and did Black Diamond Academy. So I went off from, I didn't go off from Tony, sorry. I, like, I was coaching away from Tony. Mm. Went to learn what I was doing. And Robinson had Northampton on lock. So he had his own. And the whole idea was, what we wanted was to have a pro choice to each, but a Northampton or Wolverhampton one. Mm. It one each. That would be that was the goal. Yeah. And Liam was getting a lot more success than me early on. Do you know what I mean? He just he just flew off. But he, he's good with business. Do you know what I mean? He's really clever. Yeah. Um and he's really sick as a coach. He was sick. Mm. And whereas it took me a little while to to take the stablers. The stabilizers off, do you know what I mean? It took, mm. took me a little bit longer, and then, um, whereas he was, he was ready to run straight away, but he always, he always did have his own thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it, it's, it's it is it's it's definitely not the new pro choice series, it's not that it's the reason why that I wanted the t shirt done in PCS are because. People couldn't pronounce the name. <laughs> People could butcher in the name in the first place. Right. Oh, and you like, can you not see the S in there? Mm. Like, what part of you didn't go to to school? Like, you need to stop like wagging school and going to the park and learn. <laughs> but it was when we made it pro, uh, PCS. Mm. So, but I had I had predominantly the the juniors. So we got like some really, really good juniors. Like Mikhail who fights, he'll fight anything up to eight kilos out of his weight division. Mm. He, he just come off the back of a really big win. Let's say just off the back, given COVID, where he, the French kid came over and they're trying to make the French kid lose weight in a sweatsuit. He's a child. But like, don't, don't, you can't do that. So either we fight or we don't put the, the coach was quite willing to just like let him go. And, so it's no problem. Give us, uh, I think, once an hour and a half or something like that. We'll lose weight. How can a child lose weight? It's not on the day weighing. It's dangerous. Like no head mm -hmm. contact. It's still dangerous. And then Mikhail, if you you'd love him. He's one of the. He, he's one of. He, he's sick. He's, he's seriously sick. And when Mikhail fought him. And I said to Mikhail, what do you want to do? Because, well, we've come to fight. And I was like, oh, okay. So, but you understand that he came off the scales and they gave him, like, Coca-Cola? Like, what, something weird where they gave him Coca-Cola or something, the kid. And I was like, oh, well, he's not made the weight and I don't want the kid to lose weight, but he's how quick the kid wants to drink water. Like, he wanted to drink quick. Because Mikhail, yeah. he walked in. He weighed in his tracksuit bottoms, his trainers on, and his t-shirt. Then when they put them together, when we when I when I got the pitch, bro, he was in the nose, we were like, oh Lord. Do you see the size of someone? And you think, mm. God, he, he's been beating some of the some of the really good ties. Really good ties. And then when McCall's outclassed him in every aspect of it, but couldn't do it with power because he's small. Yeah, yeah. When he starts doing things, and you just sometimes you're looking you're like you like you should have been here. You've been here before. Do you, know, you just look at a kid? You've mm. definitely been here before. He's like an old soul, you know. I mean, he's like reincarnated yeah. Sanchai or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 Wicked. That's what you try and put into with the child with the children. I want them to have the 
the aspect of just their job is to show up and fight, and my job is to to show up and coach. And Tony's job yeah. is exactly the same, if not a lot harder than mine, because I can. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? You've got to work out game plans and all the things that you don't know that a coach would really do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You wouldn't know. So I'll say to Tony, with some of the boys, I'll send Tony a fight over, and when he can watch it, he'll just send me back. Like, okay. And, they just send the message back, give them a call, and then, okay, well, the game plan's going to be this. So his job's harder than mine. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's like, for me, it's like, I've got to get him fit, mm. strong, and to a point where Tony won't slap me in the face if they don't perform. That's one of the main things. Um, but if, when <laughs> the boys do some some good things, and like, I mean... It's got to be buzz to see that, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To see that, that's a that's a big buzz, man. You know what I mean? You see, Especially right. like the kind of if it's anything like it was back in the day, it, the, the kind of family atmosphere, the kind of vibe, that environment, it, it must just be good when you see somebody achieve something. You know what I mean? It's addictive. It's a big. It, is. it really is, and they don't have to necessarily have to um, win. And all the boys, what well, I'm always really happy with is I don't tell them they need to win. Mm. What I really want is them to perform because then I know that if they perform, then we've done our job as a coaching squad. Do you know what I mean? I can't yeah. control somebody else going to punch you in the face. Yeah. I don't know how hard they hit for one. What's interesting is when you watch someone, you know, when you watch some, I guess when they when the lose as well, actually, when some people just watch you, do you know what? That was a performance and a half. Mm. Like given your level, you always want um, you always chase. That's the only problem with I think with coach. You always chasing the next thing, so you never actually ever enjoy the moment that you're actually in, because then you know you've got another two fighters out in two weeks. Right. Well, yeah. You, or you got then you're back in the gym. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You never. You do, you, do you find that's the same? That's a similar thing when when you're fighting as well, because you always seem to be pushing for the next thing the next challenge, the next whatever, do you find you don't get time to sort of reflect on what you've achieved? No, you don't. I don't think I've ever reflect on what I've achieved, never. Mm. I don't think I need to, not not the minute, not until I'm ready to hammer gloves up and say, you know what, it's done. Right. And then I can reflect on what I've done because it's, it's not about the next one because I don't have to fight all the time because I've got to think that if I fight, we need to shut this down. Because anyway. why well, you won't see this? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want that on the camera. So, uh, no, we, it's a dribble. We, it's a dribble. You know what I mean, I might even just chew while I'm doing it. <laughs> you know? So okay, okay, then right. So, so to end up, then to end up, then what I'll ask you. Okay, so to end up, what would you say that Muay Thai and martial arts has done for you? Big open question. It's a big ass question. Yeah. Um, gives you some kind of value of identity, definitely. Um, sure, I don't, I don't even know how to answer that one. You know, I'm, I'm going to be crap with that one. Um, family, uh, definitely, my help my teaching career having the the fight with me because you develop confidence. Mm. That's all I could really say. I don't know. Yeah. And how do you think it's affected you personally? As in like, like you said, it's, it's given you confidence. And um, do you think it's kind of changed your personality as like, I don't know, karma or whatever, the yeah, discipline def- side of things and stuff? Or A hundred percent. But it, it definitely makes you karma. Um, discipline, hundred percent. Because I know when I've got to put the work in, I know I can do it, and I know that if I don't do it, somebody else is. That's why when I said to you the other day, like I can't fight for something that I'm not scared of. Mm. I've got to be, I've got to be really scared of you for me to the fight. Like now, I'm. I don't know. Um, some really good fighters 
coming through. That excites me. Mm. You look at some of them, you're like, oh, I'll be going to cross you soon. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So before, so before you fall asleep, I'm going to ask you one question then. So if if there was any fight out there that you could have yeah. as a challenge, right, who would it be with? It's two. I'd take Rod Tang and I'd take Sane. That's who I'll go for. Mm. That's what? Same. Same or Rod Tang. Rod Tang. Mm. Any, any one of those two. But those two, because I looked up to Same from being young, young. Um, Rod Tang, didn't really know him, but he's, he's just destroying everything in his way at the minute. Um, yeah, I'll throw my name in with any one of those. I'm not saying that I could beat either of them, but I don't necessarily mean that they could beat me. I just think it's like, for me, with those, I'll be on point. I'm going to be on point with any one of them. Like, I'll be prepared, I'll be on point. And that's what, it, what we were talking about, like the, the fear factor. Yeah, I want to fight because I'm scared. And if I get it wrong, when I get hurt, mm. you've got months and months to left kicker. I'm on the ridiculous body shot. I just want to punch in the face all day long. Mm. So, but I'd love any any one of them. Um, non tie. Non tie. I don't know. I don't know any non tie. So turn around and jump in. Mm. Um, Rod Tang Same. Those two, two, that'd be a bad boy fight, man. Yeah, and they're both beasts, bro. Mm. They're both going to be hard, but I know that's a hard night for anyone. Mm. But it's it's doable. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not beyond you. And with those kind of guys, you're only going to get better because they're going to lift their game up as you lift yours up. Do you know what I mean? If that's a pick, if someone said, "Okay, you got two cars, you got two names, or people got ten, then I'll take it on it." I mean, that's what I'd rather do. Dean Bridget, yo, as always, man, it's been a pleasure, brother. Just picking your brain and seeing, just just chatting. Do you know what I mean? Just chatting about the whole sort of Muay Thai and how it's influenced you and how martial arts has influenced you. And your whole journey, man. You're, like you said, like you said, you don't reflect, man. But I reflect on what you've done, man, and it's mm. it's proper, man. I'm, pr I'm I'm proud to know you, bro. You know what I mean? I'm thank proud you, to know bro. you, man. And you thank you so much for having me on. It's wicked speaking to you, Trev. Yeah, pff, mate. You, you, but, uh, you can come on any time you want, mate. We do we do this weekly. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm just saying that. Uh, well, the, you know the way that I ran the hallway earlier when I was late. Yeah. I'm not tired from the hallway to the computer, so maybe we just need to leave it for now. <laughs> Sit there. All right, bro. But All right, bro. Man. Thank yo, you. Thank you yo, so much. Enough respect, yo, enough respect, man. They got you man. Take yo, care, man. bro. Take Perfect, care. Perfect, mate. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, so that's 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 my boy there, man. That's Dean. He's, um, Dean's an amazing dude, I think. Um one of, one of the endearing things about Dean is the fact that he sort of always plays it down when you try, you try to sort of, um, when you try to big him up, when you try to compliment him, he's, oh, nah, nah, nah. He's, one, he's one of those guys, one of those annoying people. Do you know what I mean? And he doesn't, he, I don't think he fully appreciates what he's done and what he's doing and continues to do. The level that what he he's operating at and... Um, and that's in that's here. That's Wolverhampton. Do you know what I mean? That's where the man's from. The man's from Bentley and Willenall. That's where the man's from. Do you know what I mean? And these are the stories to me that are so important for documenting the history of this place. These are just things I know about. Do you know what I mean? It's not even everything that's out there, I'm sure. So Dean, legendary business, mate. Do you know what I mean? Love what you're doing. Keep following the man. Uh, you can follow um, the Diamond Academy and Proud Chow Sua over in um, in Willanall. I'll put links under here, under the under the, in the uh, in the comments and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I'll make sure that people can connect with you guys on Instagram. So I love a lot of your students and stuff are live on Instagram and putting all sorts of stuff out, man. They're they're wicked. So shout out to the PCS crew. 
North Respect. And again, shout out to Dean. So what would I take from this one, this conversation? Um, I think I think the main, the, the part of the story that's always amazing is the, the, the sort of overcoming adversity and the sort of development of what Dean has become. So he's come from being a novice when we both started around the sort of same time and got to where he is now. And he still doesn't consider himself as being good, which is absolutely freaking ridiculous. The, the, the level, if you see the level, the level of competition, the level of people that he's fighting, it's, it's world, it's like the, the best in the world at that weight he's fighting at. That's, that's the, the conversation you're chatting about, mate. Do you know what I mean? My man's on some Champions League type stuff. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's not even, he's not even really sort of, accepting that you know i think like the there's a lot of people who like have lots of photos of them with the belts and all this kind of stuff he's not fussed about the belts it's all about testing yourself so that's why that's why i said he's like a bit of a throwback in that regard where it's all about the the, the journey rather than what when you get there do you know what i mean it's about who did i beat to become the the so-called best in this association if i beat people that i knew i could beat then it's no big thing but he wants the full challenge. Do you know what I mean? And I think that throws back, that's an old school thing. That's an old school thing. It sort of harks back to the times when, when Mike Tyson, for example, I mean, it's a complete different thing, but when Mike Tyson was world champion, Mike, Tam Mike Tyson was the world champion. There was one, he beat everybody. <clears throat> he beat everybody and nobody argued it. Do you know what I mean? He was the best. And I think that's what Dean, kind of wants to do, he wants to be, challenge, be challenged by the best and be named as the best, do you know what I mean? If he is the best, you know what I mean? He doesn't, he doesn't take a title as being anything. So yeah, I, I think, I think this is, is I, think, I think it's sort of overcoming adversity and taking challenges, man, even if they're really, really hard and like the fear factor, embrace that, you know what I mean? Cause that's what brings the best out of you. So yeah, wicked, wicked. So challenge yourself, man. Being scared isn't bad, so I rate that, I like that. So Dean, once again, salute my general. Nothing but love, brother. And we'll link up soon, mate, yeah? Shout out to the PCS guys, um, Professor Tony, you know how it is. Thanks for beating me up back in the day. <laughs> Tell you what, those right hands are disgusting. You know what I mean, for a guy that small, you don't even realize how hard he can hit, man. Ridiculous. So yo, yeah. So if you like this sort of thing, if you like these sort of conversations, um, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because there's a lot of things coming from Buddha Palm real soon. Um, we're gonna be live over on YouTube and on Twitch very soon with, the, with our Cinema Club Flex. So check that out, man, do you know what I mean? There'll be, there'll be notifications on the YouTube channel. So, so until then, people, love, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks.